Warning, this video contains themes of violence, drug use, and gang activity. Every effort has been made to censor any shocking clips that depict violence in line with YouTube's community guidelines. If you're over 18 and you want to see the uncut version of my videos, they're available to my supporters over on patreon.com slash traplorross. This video has been put together as a historical account of the events that unfolded in this story. No disrespect is intended, and rest in peace to everyone mentioned in this video who sadly lost their lives. Chaos at a packed concert. A person was stabbed and police have shut down the show. The spotlight's on me. These motherfuckers are scared of me, bro. Watch what you say. Watch who you hang around with. You can't no L.A. rapper that's out here that's mainstream say he beat a murder, attempted murder, five attempted murder, and a DP. I don't be robbed to get I can't even be slipping like that to where somebody catch me like The homie's gonna get you. The victim was rapper Draco the Ruler. It happened around 8.30 last night during the Once Upon a Time in LA Music Festival being held at the Bank of California Stadium. On December the 18th, 2021, Draco the Ruler, real name Daryl Caldwell, was booked to perform at the Los Angeles Music Festival Once Upon a Time in LA. This would be a $50,000 payday for Draco and only his second performance in his home city since getting out of jail the previous year. But Draco would never make it to the stage that night, because while he was walking through the venue with a small entourage of around six people, story goes he was ambushed by as many as 80 Blood Gang members after being spotted by his enemies backstage. This confrontation ended in a huge brawl where unfortunately Draco would end up being stabbed in the neck, ultimately losing his life in the hospital. But what could Draco have possibly done to have caused the Bloods to want to hunt him down and kill him on sight? Well, over the past few years, Draco the ruler had been taking the LA rap scene by storm, but his musical come up was marred by legal issues, particularly a controversial murder case which he ended up beating after spending around three years in jail, much to the disappointment of local prosecutors. Upon his release, Draco would go on a relentless campaign, putting his pain into music and taking over the LA rap scene with regular releases of tough guy anthems about a life of crime. But while Draco was beginning to rule the scene with his music, since getting out of jail, he had also been heavily active on social media, using it to provoke his rivals and stoke up beefs, massively blurring the lines between competitive rap rivalries and all-out gang war. And this habit would ultimately bleed into Draco's music, with his gangster rap hits often laced with incendiary taunts aimed at his rivals mocking their losses in the streets. In fact, the songs that Draco was releasing after beating his murder case were full of offensive catchphrases like, he's never coming back and that's that, or he's no longer. When he was on the mic, Draco loved embarrassing and mocking his enemies. But the 2021 release of a diss song called Ingle Weird would see Draco making a complete mockery of the entire blood-affiliated city of Inglewood. This song would ultimately make Draco a marked man in LA. And within only a few months of the release of this song, Draco would indeed end up being murdered in a horrific fashion. So far, the police have hit a wall of silence in the investigation of Draco the Ruler's murder, with no one willing to talk to the police on both sides. But if you look close enough at Draco's career in the lead up to his tragic passing, you'll find a few clues as to why people in the city of LA might have wanted to get him out of the way. So today, let's take a close look at the wild life of Draco the Ruler, his many beefs, hit songs, and legal issues to better understand how he ended up in this situation with millions of fans and an entire city wanting to kill him. Draco the Ruler was truly no stranger to LA's criminal underworld. He was getting in trouble with the law from an incredibly early age, claiming to have been arrested for the first time at the young age of just 12 after apparently stealing a dollar from a tip jar. What I went to jail for? You're 12. Oh man, I took a dollar out of tip jar. A dollar? <laughs> and then I tried to put it back. After getting his first taste of law breaking, a pre-teen Draco would end up being shipped off to a youth correctional facility known as a camp. But unfortunately, it didn't seem that this camp started punishment would address the root cause of Draco's issues. And apparently from here, a young Draco would continue to rack up teenage criminal charges, mainly related to burglary and gun possession, landing him in various youth correctional facilities throughout his teens. But Draco wouldn't be catching these early cases alone, but it would seem that many of Draco's early forays into crime were actually backed up by his younger brother, Ralphie the Plug, who would tell Adam22 in a No Jumper interview that he was really out here catching cases for robbery with Draco at age 11. When you first get locked up? Shit, when I was 11. 11? Mm -hmm. For what? Matter of fact, me and Draco had our first case together. Bullshit, attempted robbery, bullshit, little shit. So is this an armed attempted robbery? Or nah, hell no, nah, not at 11. 
or armed at a <laughs> It's in Chicago. He ain't out here just tripping like that. <laughs> Sadly, as Draco got older, he'd continue to be involved in crime and the risks associated with it. He'd end up getting shot while still a freshman at Washington High, just age 15, eventually being kicked out of school completely, eventually winding up making a living through home invasions or flu flamming, as he would call it. You see, apparently Draco and his buddies were pretty regular flu flammers, with their door-to-door -door robbery team apparently being known as the Too Greedy family, or later, the Stink Team. Now, according to accusations by prosecutors, members of the Too Greedy family were known as flockers, an LA term used for burglary crews, often targeting Asian households. And apparently a result of the crew's heritage in robbing LA's Asian community, a lot of the Too Greedy family and stink team's artwork and jewelry would bear an Asian theme. And this obsession with Asian culture carried over into the music too, with Draco often rapping about Mei Ling taking him shopping, which an LA Times article covering Draco said is Draco's way of describing breaking into an Asian woman's house, robbing it, and buying out Neiman Marcus. Now, for the record, Draco has maintained that he simply likes Asian iconography, suggesting that the Buddha and cat logos that his crew frequently use are simply symbols of good business and good luck. However, if Draco's 2015 tweets are anything to go by, it's hard to say he has much respect for the Asian community. But Draco and his crew's targeting of the Asian community with home invasions isn't simply due to prejudice. Apparently, home invaders targeting the Asian community is an age-old tradition amongst LA burglars due to the apparent fact that Asian communities have an inherent distrust of traditional banks with lower rates of bank account ownership, meaning a large proportion are likely to keep cash in their homes, thus putting them at risk to LA home invaders like Draco and the Stink Team, who are desperate to make off with that cash and spend it on designer clothes at Neiman Marcus. But Draco isn't the only LA rapper to speak on flu flamming or flocking. Compton rapper YG's 2014 track Meet the Flockers would catch some heat after people noticed some lyrics, suggesting that his crew would target Asian homes for robberies for the very same reasons. Anywho, despite being plugged into LA's criminal underworld, Draco the Ruler doesn't claim affiliation to any particular LA gang set, even going as far as to suggest during an interview on No Jumper that most rappers claim gang affiliation purely for protection. Or does Draco gangbang? Uh, we, don't, we don't do all that. Guys, hmm. we just be gangbanging for protection. Bombs. To be honest, calling most of LA's gang population bums is a pretty brave thing to do. But that says a lot about how Draco moved. He was fearless, and he did not care who he offended. And despite not claiming a known gang set, Draco did hail from South Central Los Angeles around the 100s, which is a neighborhood crip territory. And as a result, over the course of his career, Draco maintained friendships with a number of sets of LA's neighborhood crips, like the Rolling 40s, who he would publicly shout out on his social media. Man, shout out to all the 40s, man. Happy hood day to the Crips. So as a result of his gang connections and his background in home invasions, it's no surprise that the local police would categorize the stink team itself as a gang in its own right. Even though in the later stages of his career, Draco would maintain that his team were focused on the rapping rather than the streets, with Draco's lawyer later explaining that the local police are quick to conflate anybody that grew up around gangs as being a gang member. Some prosecution's theory, anybody that grows up in a community that has gangs in it and they know gang members, they're gang affiliated, right? Despite Draco's insistence that the stink team was just a rap crew, prosecutors would think otherwise. Court documents would later claim that the Too Greedy family, or stink team, was a gang around 20 to 30 members strong, noting the fact that various members of the stink team also belonged to various factions of LA's neighborhood crips, like the Rolling Hundreds and Rolling Forties. And ultimately, whether he liked it or not, the cops would categorize the stink team as a gang, with Draco the ruler at the top of the food chain. Draco would be running things with his blood brother, Ralphie the Plug. The top up-and-coming artist other than Draco on their label was Ketchy the Great, and they would roll alongside a number of other affiliates including Bambino, Say So The Mac, Solo, Good Finesse, Money Monk, Kells with connections to the Rolling 100s Crips, Young Bull with apparent connections to the Rolling 30s, Too Shitty with connections to the Rolling 60s, a teenage hitter by the name of AB or Arlington Blue with connections to the Rolling 40s, and another rapper named Remble who would join the crew much later on. According to the police, the Stink Team were a ruthless gang made up of Crips and home invaders. But in Draco's eyes, his crew of former flu flammers were really just the next generation of LA's grimiest street rappers. And under Draco's rule, for a period of time, they would take over the LA street rap scene, flooding the streets with a flurry of hit songs and mixtapes, building up a huge buzz that could only be stopped by the cops.
Footage of Draco rapping on YouTube exists as early as 2011. He was a prolific YouTube uploader, publishing early freestyles over other rappers' beats all the way through the 2012s, as well as posting clips of him hanging out with his two greedy family. Okay, what they call you, buddy? Me, Draco the Roller, fool. Yeah, I be Lieutenant Catchy in this thing. I ain't ready for him. Tell him the Jeremy Scott. But it was in 2013 that Draco got serious about releasing music properly, dropping his first mixtape, Nervous Music, which featured the headline track, I'm Nervous, featuring Kells from the Stink Team, uploaded to YouTube on November the 12th, 2012. And the description of Draco's music as, quote, nervous music, would persist throughout his career, with lyrics about nervously toting pistols and trap houses, becoming a staple of his whole catalogue. But at this stage, he was still just finding his sound, and the music was heavily influenced by an array of other artists. Tracks like Muddy Mosley showed his early influences by Chicago Drill. He'd go on to drop a music video for another Chicago-inspired track called Young and Reckless, showing him surrounded by his two greedy team. Seeing Draco surrounded by a mob of goons while he rapped over a booming trap beat was definitely reminiscent of early Chief Keith, but Draco was drawing inspiration from numerous sources. His Can You Blame Me music video dropped on June the 2nd, 2013, seemingly taking more inspiration from ASAP Rocky in both his flow and the visuals. And this combination of pistol-toting thug aesthetic borrowed from Chief Keith and the designer clothing expensive cough syrup sipping tropes from ASAP Rocky would essentially be the foundations of Draco's unique style of rapping. Draco is essentially a well-dressed robber that will shoot you in a designer jacket and not spill his ling while he's doing it. And as his rapping style developed, he would continue dropping mixtapes, with the next one being Mr. Mosley the Mixtape, dropping in 2014. This had the track Real Flockers, with Draco appearing to take some inspiration from West Coast peers like YG and Tiger, as well as tracks like Round Here, with Draco still showing a big Chicago influence. The track In Love with Mr. Mosley, featuring Too Shitty, would see Draco rapping over more of a classic West Coast style beat, while tracks like You Can't Afford It with Kells and J Depp were clearly influenced by early Atlanta trap music. You can tell that Draco was striving around this time to make bigger and better music and grow as an artist. And fortunately, a big break was just around the corner. On February the 19th, 2015, Draco drops an early version of his song Mr. Get Doe, with an updated version of the music video for the track being uploaded to YouTube on March 11th, 2015. This was a breakthrough track for Draco, with him rapping over a minimal West Coast piano beat, rapping all about getting money and making a way in high-speed chases. The track picked up a lot of steam in the streets of LA and put Draco on a lot of people's radar. And at some point he gets introduced to LA music production titan DJ Mustard, with an introduction apparently coming courtesy of YG's brother, whom Draco had apparently known since high school. Draco's breakout track Mr. Get Dope would end up getting a remix from DJ Mustard, who added his own up-and-coming artists RJ and Choice to the track alongside Draco, with the new version of the song releasing on April the 14th, 2015. This was one of the first times that many casual LA rap fans would have heard Draco, and he picked up particular attention for his rapping style, using a lot of obscure and made-up slang, or lingo bingo as he would call it, and his lazy, mumble style of rapping, which many believed was the consequence of his heavy recreational use of codeine-based cough syrup. Clearly fans liked what they heard when Draco popped up on DJ Mustard's remix, and they wanted to hear more. So on October the 16th, 2015, Draco's groundbreaking new mixtape, I Am Mr. Mosley, would release on DJ Mustard's label. This project is apparently what created the first real buzz around the Stink team, and as we got into 2016, Draco and his team would capitalize off the back of the hype, and following up with much more polished music videos, like the April 24th, 2016 music video for the track Devil In My Head. But while Draco was up in the production value, he was also battling for the future of his career behind the scenes. And Draco would later claim during a DJ Vlad interview that he was being pressured to sign a full-blown record deal with DJ Mustard, which he declined to do, ultimately leading Mustard and his team to begin treating Draco differently. So then you sign under Mustard? I didn't sign. No? Nah? No, nah, I was just what I'm like. I guess I didn't want to sign, so then that's, I guess, when like people from his group, and, like, I guess they was mad at me because I didn't want to sign, so. So in the end, Draco decided to go his own route. He followed up that DJ Mustard supported mixtape with a new offering on July the 21st, 2016, a completely independent mixtape called I Am Mr. Mosley 2, presented this time by his own stink team label rather than DJ Mustard's crew. Sure, it might have been a step down in quality of the cover art, but it was a big step forward for Draco in keeping control of his music. 
music career. And the project was another opportunity for Draco to continue developing his signature style. This time injecting his personality and sense of humour into his tracks with absurd and sometimes hilarious premises for his new songs. For example, there's the crazy cut Shoot a Baby, which ended up getting a music video in September 2016, with Draco rapping that he has killers on standby that are so dedicated to the cause that they will literally shoot a baby if he asks them, with Draco in the music video with a Draco sticking up a fake baby. Draco was carving out his own lane in the rap game, putting his personality into his music and the fans were loving it. And Draco would actually later say in a DJ Vlad interview that everybody doubted him after he parted ways with DJ Mustard, but in the end, he was able to carve out his own path and get respect independently. A lot of people were saying like, damn bro, like you did this without Mustard. Like they thought like, oh he ain't with Mustard no more. Like he gonna fall off. Well he with Mustard, okay, yeah. Like Mustard probably did this for him. Mustard probably did this, but then you see like, I'm not with him, but I still got the same. Draco's parting with DJ Mustard would be just the first of many steps in upsetting the balance of LA's highly political rap scene. And as the months went on, Draco would find himself embroiled in a feud with a former collaborator, leading Draco and his former friend to go back and forth on social media, with Draco's public threats against his new musical rival sadly being used against him in the worst possible way. After Draco declined to do further business with DJ Mustard, tension would begin to form between their camps. And soon, Mustard's artist RJ, who had appeared on the Mr. Get Doe remix with Draco, would begin taking competitive jabs at Draco. In fact, Draco would even explain to DJ Vlad that when he stopped working with DJ Mustard, RJ would pick his side. Was it when you kind of stopped messing with Mustard? That Pretty much, yeah, when I went. And RJ took Mustard's side? Yeah, I guess that's what it was like, like. From here, RJ would grow even closer to DJ Mustard and continue driving his career forward dropping tracks like Get Rich in April 2015. And at a certain point, RJ rebrands and begins to call himself RJ Mr. LA. Now, this seems like a previous reference to Draco calling himself Mr. Get Doe in the song him and RJ appeared on. And it really seemed like RJ was trying to kind of claim the more superior title of Mr. LA, essentially saying that he runs the rap scene in the city. Apparently, Draco was upset about RJ's claim to the title of Mr. LA, suggesting that because he was the one who came up with Mr. Get Doe, he really was Mr. Everything. But from here, soon RJ would be dropping lyrics attempting to get under Draco's skin even further. RJ's May 2016 track, Only One, is a competitive diss track seemingly aimed at Draco, where RJ claims that he is the only one popping in the hood now. And RJ would back this sentiment up in an August 2016 tweet, where he claimed that he only gets mentioned alongside the greats when it comes to LA street rappers. Draco would clap back at this sentiment in a tweet of his own saying, you and me both, suggesting that both him and RJ are greats in the city of LA. But RJ would disagree with this, saying nah, Draco Draco isn't as good as him. This led Draco to clap back saying RJ can't possibly believe that, ultimately saying maybe RJ had LA's rap scene once, but Draco has it now. Following that tweet up with the devastating closer, responding to RJ saying that he runs the streets of LA, saying, that's not what LA's saying, Mr. LA. As the months went by, the beef between Draco and RJ would intensify. On October the 19th, 2016, Draco would release his new song, Evil Knievel, dissing RJ, saying that he's already been Mr. LA and that he is Mr. Everything. And later that month, on October the 27th, 2016, somebody would tweet asking why are RJ and Draco beefing, to which RJ would reply, jealousy. Draco would then reply to that tweet, saying that he's got a better car than RJ, so why would he be jealous? Pointing out that he drives a brand new 2016 Mercedes GLE Coupe SUV, while RJ only drives a 2012 Mercedes S650. RJ would clap back to this car measuring contest, suggesting that Draco's GLE Coupe is much more like a BMW X6, essentially suggesting that Draco Draco's choice of Mercedes is a feminine one. Now, for now, this beef had only played out in songs and on Twitter. And these Twitter exchanges were going around the same time that RJ was actually on tour with YG on the F Donald Trump tour. But apparently whilst RJ was on tour with YG, Draco was waiting for him back in LA, even posting up on social media, telling RJ that he is literally waiting for him to get back from tour. If you see me in LA, you're gonna see me in LA, Mr. LA, and I'ma have some bands on me. On November the 17th, 2016, RJ would drop the song Warning, a Draco the Ruler diss, remixing his song Uchi's. Now, the track came with an intro skit sampling Friday After Next, which RJ essentially used to infer that he was better than Draco in every way, with RJ going on to rap lyrics, subliminally dissing his ops saying that they're not threatening, and suggesting that his fame made people in the city hate him. He would rap lines about his ops making up their own cliques and acting like they're gangbangers, with this perhaps being a reference to how Draco formed the Stink Team, rather than joining the neighborhood 
Crip gangs in the area that he grew up in. It's worth pointing out at this stage that allegedly RJ claims affiliation to the Athens Park Bloods. So despite Draco not specifically claiming a gang, there's clearly some kind of underlying affiliations contributing to this beef. Following the release of Warning, RJ would drop a flurry of tracks and music videos too. With his close connection to fellow Blood rapper YG on display in music videos like Blood Da, dropping in November 2016. Now, the very same day that that track dropped on the 21st, Draco would go on to drop his new song Mr. Everything. Another obvious reference to RJ calling himself Mr. LA after Draco had been calling himself Mr. Get Doe, Draco's new song Mr. Everything was an outright effort to let everybody know that he was bigger than Mr. LA. He also wears a blue bandana in the video, which despite Draco's frequent statements that he doesn't belong to any Crip sets, must have been a small indication, likely a response to RJ's blood affiliation. In the song, Draco says he's sliding through the hoods of the people that talk about him. He says that he'll get RJ whacked by his own people for trying to be him. He says RJ's broken, has fake watches. And the hook of the song has Draco saying he's Mr. Everything and that his ops lie in their raps and steal his image and style. Draco also seemingly responds to the accusation that he made his gang up, saying the stink team are bigger and richer than RJ's blood set. And Draco also says in the second verse of the song that he is trying to knock one of his peoples and saying that he has 20,000 on him, leading many people to believe that he actually had a hit out on RJ. If Draco's lyrics were to be taken seriously, he was putting money on RJ's head and actively plotting to kill him. However, Draco and his team would insist that this was all just a music rivalry and that they had no intentions to harm RJ. Unfortunately, this very feud would come back to haunt Draco. With an unrelated murder taking place and Draco and his team ending up as the prime suspects, sadly this catalogue of gangbanging and gun-toting anthems would have the whole stink team, especially Draco, looking guilty as sin. You'll be aware at this point that while Draco the Ruler doesn't claim an alliance to a specific LA gang set, he's got a lot of collaborators, friends, and affiliates who do claim gang sets associated with the neighborhood crypts. And one of these crip affiliated stink team members is Kells of the Rolling Hundreds. Kells would appear on the song Chunky Monkey with Draco and Ralphie on October the 25th, 2016. A track all about keeping a big gun, or as they call it, a chunky monkey. With stink team members dancing around in the music video wearing gorilla masks and toting chunky monkeys. But it would turn out that these chunky monkeys weren't just for showing off in the music video. It was clear that the stink team would need to protect themselves around this period, as according to a Fader article, the very month that this video was released, Draco, Ketchy, and Too Shitty of the stink team were all shot at in separate incidents. It's still unclear exactly why or who would want to kill the stink team, but their ongoing feuds with other blood gang associated rappers and their close affiliation with various crip sets clearly hadn't done them any favours. Whilst Draco's ongoing rivalry with Athens Park Blood are was getting a lot of attention because of the music that they were making, it would actually be the Neighbourhood Crips ongoing street war with the Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods that would ultimately bring tragedy to the stink team. The Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods, or IFGB, or simply Inglewood Family's gang, IFG, are an LA blood set with a long and storied history. They mainly beef with Neighbourhood Crip gangs like the Rolling 60s and Rolling 100s, gang sets which the stink team apparently have close affiliations with. And in the streets, one of the biggest names associated with Inglewood is Munchie B an Inglewood blood with a fearsome reputation in the streets. But his reign as a hardened hitter would be cut short after he was shot in the head and left blind, apparently the result of an internal conflict. But even without his sight, Munchie B would remain an influential figure in LA gang politics for years to come. In fact, Munchie B would end up being interviewed alongside fellow Inglewood bloods, Baby Dot and Red Bull, giving the history of their hood to a channel called Street TV. Munchie B, Inglewood family gangsters. Red Bull, nine dude, single with fam. Somebody put up on the side of my car and let off a gang of shots. You know what I mean? So I ended up taking taking a shot to the head. Shit, but unfortunately I ended up losing my sight. And during that interview, this trio of Inglewood Bloods would also explain their connections to DJ Mustard and YG. Yeah, it go way back to the chain game before it's Inglewood family just called the chain game. All these uh, LA based rappers, we pretty much all uh, party together before they blew up though. The boy Ty, Mustard, oh, yeah, yeah, YG, yeah, yeah, yeah. J305. So with the rivalry between the Stink team and DJ Mustard, YG and RJ heating up off the back of diss tracks, you can see why there's a lot of interconnected reasons why the Bloods and the Stinks aren't going to get 
along. And to make matters worse, it would later emerge that Stink Team member Kells had an active feud with Red Bull, the Inglewood family blood, who had appeared alongside Munchie B in that Street TV interview. Red Bull allegedly also had a serious reputation when it came to Inglewood gang politics, but sadly, Red Bull would eventually run into the Stink Team with deadly consequences. Because on Saturday, the 10th of December 2016, several members of the Stink Team, including Kells and Draco, were chilling at Draco's house. And it was here that Draco would see what was later described as a pay for entry pajama party advertised on Instagram, with Draco rallying the Stink Team to go from his place to the party, with plans for 17 year old Crip affiliate Arlington Blue, aka AB, real name Jaden Boyd, planning to join the Stink Team en route. The whole crew would travel in a five car convoy to the party in Carson, around 15 minutes away from Draco's apartment, with the crew arriving to the area and parking their cars. At some point, too shitty from the Stink Team approaches Draco's car to tell him that members from Inglewood families are there, with Draco apparently suggesting at this point that the crew leave. However, within seconds, Red Bull from Inglewood, real name Davon Gregory, would walk past the Stink Team. This was a completely chance encounter, with Red Bull apparently being spotted at the wrong place in the wrong time by his opposition. With Kells and AB, the neighborhood crips that were also in the Stink Team, who had an active feud with Red Bull and the Inglewood families, pulling pistols and opening fire as soon as they saw him. The shooting erupted at around 11.30 p.m., leaving two unrelated people injured, and Red Bull shot numerous times, sadly later losing his life. Shots were fired at a birthday party in Carson. Three men were hit and one of them has now died. The shooting happened just before midnight in the 100 block of West Victoria Street. The shootout was just in front of the building that housed the party. Deputies say as many as 100 people were attending what they describe as a pay for entry adult themed party. These women told me about 30 young men showed up after the party started and were turned away because they didn't have IDs and some had guns. Uh, something happened in the parking lot, shots were fired, and the next thing that these two women told me that they knew was that someone who had been shot in the parking lot ran back into the party. But after the shooting, Kells turned to Draco and bragged of how he emptied his entire clip into Red Bull. And apparently following the shooting, the stink team jumped back into their cars, driving back to Draco's apartment in complete silence, with the group apparently being unaware that Red Bull had even died until they saw it on the news at 3am the next day. A vigil for Red Bull would take place in his hood the next day, with the local police moving dirty and targeting the event, shooting somebody and arresting a whopping 10 people. We have learned that 10 people who were at the gathering have been arrested. They say the event was a memorial for a 24-year-old man killed at a party in Carson Saturday night. NBC4 covered that as well, but last night around 10:30, LAPD says two units from the gang enforcement division out of Southeast Station approached a group of about 30 people outside a home on 99th Street west of Figueroa. LAPD describes a gathering as a party and says as officers approached some of the people in the group started running away what one man allegedly pulled a gun and shot at the officers. They were not hit but one at least returned uh, fire. Rebel's friend Baby Dot who had appeared in that street TV interview with him alongside Munchie B would later speak on his friend's passing in a follow-up interview. He was up there chilling, standing in line, and some shit jumped off, and he happened to be one of the people who uh, happened to take the downfall for it, man. Oh, that shit hit close, man. Like, Red Bull was like the first homie I lost in a long time that I was actually really close with. And once you lose that certain person that's damn near like a brother to you, it's, it's, it hit a little harder than homes. Munchie B would also mourn the loss of Red Bull, later releasing an emotional tribute song to him called R.I.P. R.B. Now initially, detectives didn't have anything to link Red Bull's murder to the Stink Team, and after the shooting went down, Draco would return to music and go on to drop some of the best songs of his career. Problem is, he probably didn't realize that he was leaving evidence behind at every turn. On December the 16th, 2016, Draco's new song Bully Breaker drops, with detectives later saying that it was this music video that helped them find the location of Draco's apartment. And then just over a week after that, Draco would drop another music video filmed in his apartment, The Impatient Freestyle. The December 18th, 2016 music video would go Go on to be the most viewed music video of Draco's career, racking up over 31 million YouTube views to date. And the video for Impatient featured Draco and his crew posted up in his apartment, showing off a bunch of big guns, as well as scenes filmed in a parking garage, as always showing off his beloved Mercedes GLE Coupe. The song itself included thugged out lyrics all about guns, shootings, and a line where he literally says, if you want to represent
represent the stink team, you need to hop out the car and kill someone. Following this, Draco's third mixtape, So Cold I Do Em, dropped on Christmas Day 2016. The mixtape featured a front cover, once again, sporting Draco's signature Mercedes SUV. It was a great mixtape, but unfortunately for Draco, that Mercedes SUV that he'd been putting in his music videos and on the cover of his tapes, and bragging about on Twitter, matched the description of a vehicle that was seen leaving the scene of Red Bull's murder. And very soon, the feds would come knocking for the stink team, ready to do everything in their power to take them down. On the 31st of December 2016, Draco drops the Flex Freestyle. This is a remix of RJ's song Flex, a retaliation to RJ remixing Draco's song on Warning, and it features a lyric where Draco says that he has RJ tied up in the back of his car. This was a pretty inane lyric aiming to poke fun at a rival, but sadly it would come back to haunt Draco massively. Because while Draco was recording music and videos, trying to push his rap career forward, local police were watching his videos and reading his lyrics, intensely looking for clues to connect the stink team to the December 10th murder of Red Bull, and soon they would have the connection that they needed. Because at this point, all the cops had were bullets and shell casings from 38 and 40 caliber pistols, as well as surveillance footage and witnesses placing a Mercedes SUV at the scene. However, at some point, detectives working the case hear Draco's name mentioned on an unrelated wiretap, plus the victim's family telling cops that they heard rumors that Draco was somehow involved in the murder. This was apparently all that was needed to tie Draco to the crime, and at this point, the cops decided to close in. Only a couple of days after after the Flex Freestyle, one day after Draco's son was born, and one day after New Year's on the 2nd of January 2017, the members of the Stink Team are all hanging out at the LA condo where Draco had filmed his earlier Impatient Freestyle and the Bully Breaker music video. According to later court documents, Draco's distinctive Mercedes being parked outside alerted the cops that he was indeed in the property. Draco's apartment was then raided by the SWAT team, who found Draco's family and the Stink Team in the house in the presence of a number of firearms. The cops would arrest Draco and his homies, including including his brother Ralphie the Plug, with Draco receiving six counts of unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon, with Draco later telling DJ Vlad that he racked up a total of nine counts that day. Every single one. How many guns? Only one. Nine. So all nine guns, they said, were yours? Yeah, every single one. And apparently even Draco's mother and sister were there, getting arrested alongside a whole bunch of the Stink Team members. My mom, my sister, too shitty, his baby mama, and Bambino, Solo, my brother. It was a lot of people. It was a lot of people. Nothing connecting Draco or the Stink Team to the murder of Red Bull was found that day, and apparently the guns that were found in the property were not the ones used in the murder of Red Bull. But regardless, Draco would still be headed to jail, with rap blogs beginning to position him as LA's Gucci Mane. Fortunately, Draco was able to continue to release music and music videos from behind bars, with pre-recorded tracks like Cocoon releasing publicly over this period. In a February 2017 interview with LA Weekly from jail, Draco said he was optimistic about his release, and vowing to hit the studio as soon as he got home. But perhaps he shouldn't have been so optimistic. Because while Draco was remaining solid in his cell, the same couldn't be said about some of his Stink Team brethren. After being arrested, Stink Team member 2 Shitty is placed into a cell with an undercover informant, who is planted there wearing a wire specifically to gather information about Red Bull's murder. Now, this is part of a controversial strategy, where the local detectives take advantage of a loophole where they're allowed to send in jailhouse informants undercover as long as it's done before suspects are formally charged. It's a slippery tactic, but it sure does work as it was later revealed in court that Too Shitty had spilled the beans to this informant completely, admitting directly to the undercover that the shooter was that 17-year-old crip called A.B., or Arlington Blue, real name Jaden Boyd, the Rolling Forties crip who had accompanied the stink team to that party. After Too Shitty's confession, A.B. is then arrested himself and placed into a cell with another undercover informant, posing as an OG crip. And once again, A.B. confesses the crime and many specific details to this undercover snitch, with a one-hour, 22-minute recording of their conversation even being played to the court. During this conversation, AB admitted outright that he shot Red Bull with the 38 pistol, as well as saying that it was Kells shooting with the 40 Glock. AB even admitted that he had been actively beefing with Red Bull over this period and had planned to shoot him on sight, even going as far as to break down why he used a 38 pistol specifically so that he didn't leave behind shell casings. I mean, he literally admitted to the undercover directly that he got caught on camera smoking somebody. He admitted shooting the man directly two times, but denied shooting him in the head, quite literally saying definitively that he popped Kerr. Now, during this conversation, AB only incriminated himself and Kells, essentially saying 
nothing to implicate Draco. And as far as Draco's concerned, at this point it really should have been case closed. Because the two shooters had been identified specifically, and there wasn't a single mention of Draco's role in the murder to be found at all. In fact, during this time, the cops even tried to put an undercover informant into Draco's cell too, with a minute and a half recording captured within Draco's cell revealing absolutely nothing. Because there was nothing to speak on. From start to finish, it appeared clearly established that AB and Kells killed Red Bull in a split-second decision, with Draco apparently completely unaware of what was going to unfold that night. So, the cops would have no choice but to let Draco go for now. But sadly, they would hold a grudge. And only after a few months of freedom, the cops would return to try and pull off a tricky maneuver, using flimsy evidence and a convoluted case to take Draco off the streets once again, this time at the height of his fame. Draco would spend 10 months in jail before eventually being released on bail in November 2017. And as soon as he's released from jail, Draco gets out and spends around 10 days in the studio recording 16 tracks for his new mixtape, Cold Devil, which releases on December the 26th, 2017. This mixtape was the biggest release of Draco's career to date, cementing him as one of LA's foremost independent street rappers. Pitchfork reviewed the album positively, calling it the most compelling release of his career, and Draco backed up the tape with music videos of the most compelling songs. Flu Flamming was Draco's flagship anthem of being a home invader targeting the Asian community. Laced with tongue-in-cheek lyrics about Mei Ling taking him shopping, he had other classic tracks like Big Bank Uchis and Out the Slums with O3 Greedo, with the videos for these tracks racking up millions of views and cementing Draco's place as one of LA's most popping rappers. But naturally, this didn't stop the haters, as people like former collaborator Scheme were releasing diss tracks aimed at Draco shortly after his release. But Draco wouldn't let the haters stop him, and he would continue promoting himself and his career. On December the 14th, 2017, Draco popped up alongside his brother Ralphie the Plug for his first major interview since being released from jail on No Jumper with Adam22. And during this interview, he touched on a lot of interesting things. Telling Adam about his intense withdrawals going cold turkey from codeine-based cough syrup whilst in jail, and detailing his massive weight loss as a result. Oh what? yeah, suffering. Suffering. <laughs> Sweating. Looking like a heroin addict in that mouth. Oh. Bitch, you gonna tell me? So you you gotta lose skin here. What you were doing in there? Ah, she got to like a crystal head. <laughs> Draco also touched on people dissing him while he was in jail, acknowledging that his former friend Scheme had turned on him, and saying that RJ had been telling his crowds to hate on Draco. Scheme, who was your homie before? You had songs before with him, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I know. And then especially like, don't I guess get, don't get it. No cloud. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people want to know about the beef with you and RJ. Oh no, that before he was. Going all over the town and shit, making posters, oh, and yeah. signs and shit. He had a show. Yeah, Draco. Like, uh, we hear start off his show like, let me hear y'all say Draco. Draco would actually go on to say that him and RJ settled their beef before he went to jail. But yeah, yeah that shit over now though. That shit over. It's over. Yeah, like you guys so. talked about it or something? Yeah, I seen him. He said that we um both. Well, I'm from the West and need to represent the West and we both can't be beefing and all this other shit. And he would end his interview by saying that he wants to stay away from guns and stay out of jail. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'm chilling, man. You know, no guns, no videos, nothing like that. No guns in the videos. And That's okay. a big change right there. Super Soaker 3000 or something. It was good to see Draco taking positive steps since his release. And from here, he would continue pushing his career forward and racking up big wins. On December the 19th, he did a big sold out show at the Observatory. And on December the 28th, 2017, him and Ralphie would release their new song, The Right Decision, where spray paint shown on a wall in the opening shot would reveal graffiti saying, Free Drakey, Fuck Too Snitchy, a reference to the stink team member Too Shitty, slipping up and telling a prison house informant the details of the Red Bull murder. But sadly, once again, this, just like many other references to street goings on in Draco's songs and music videos, would end up being used against him by detectives. With the public diss towards a cooperating stink team member apparently being interpreted by detectives as witness intimidation, which they tried to use to escalate the charges against Draco. Somebody had tagged uh, right. too snitchy mm -hmm. about um, a guy who was stink team that had given some information to the police. So they tagged the witness intimidation uh, with a gang enhancement. So now these guys are facing life in prison. 
So while Draco had spent the months between December 2017 and March 2018 focused on his career and building his fan base, the cops would be building their case. Taking notes on everything that Draco said or did over this period, trying to twist it to use it against him. And it would appear that eventually they decided to strike Draco down once again, this time at the very peak of his career. As the mainstream media would finally pay attention to this LA legend in the making, in a comprehensive LA Times piece covering Draco's come up being published in March 2018. An interview ironically starting out discussing Draco's previous release from jail, describing his 2017 stint behind bars as an 11 month iron vacation for multiple counts of unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. And in a tragic case of famous last words, with Draco saying in that article that he thought that his time in prison would have been much worse. Perhaps it was arrogant comments like this that had the cops itching to put Draco back into jail, this time under much harsher conditions. Because around two weeks after that interview had taken place, quite literally just days after this LA Times story went public, Draco would be arrested for possession of a firearm once again. Draco was brought to the police station where he weirdly said that the cops were playing his music, before then being taken to court where Draco said that he apparently had no idea what was going on, at which point prosecutors dropped the shocking bomb on him that he was being charged with first degree murder, five counts of attempted murder, and conspiracy to commit murder in connection with Red Bull's death. These would be serious charges, and beating them would be no easy feat. But it wasn't just Draco in trouble. Other members of the Stink team were arrested as part of this case, like Ralphie and Ketchy who were arrested in San Francisco whilst on tour with Shoreline Mafia, with the cops apparently using their Instagram posts to locate them. And Ralphie would later elaborate being caught up in this sudden Stink team sweep in an interview on No Jumper. Wait, where'd they get you? Uh, from uh, from San Francisco. So you went all the way up there just we to get arrested for shit in there. LA? We thinking we cool, we Instagram, playing 2K and shit. As soon as we check in, I open the, they open the door, I'm laying on the bed, I look up and police coming. I'm looking, I'm like, ah, oh, man, this is some bullshit. Homies laying outside, right. towels and shit, no clothes on and shit. I thought I was supposed to be on tour. He drove all the way out there for nine hours just to drive back 12 hours on the bus. So with the Stink team firmly behind bars, Draco would have to prepare for the fight of his life. A full-blown murder charge where the worst possible outcome might just be life in prison or even the death penalty. Draco explained to DJ Vlad that he was charged with first degree murder, five counts of attempted murder, and conspiracy to commit murder in March 2018. First degree murder, conspiracy, five attempted murders. Five attempted five. murders and two gun charges. It would later emerge that in addition to these charges, Draco was also being accused of shooting from a motor vehicle, illegal possession of a firearm, and criminal gang conspiracy. It's hard enough fighting a murder charge in five attempts, but the use of a gang enhancement, a law that's used to impose harsher punishments on those who commit crimes in furtherance of a gang, would see much more serious punishment for the crimes committed if found guilty. In the case of homicide, this meant that Draco was facing, at worst, the death penalty or life in prison. Draco was quite literally fighting for his life as a result of his supposed gang affiliations. But let's not forget, Draco doesn't claim to belong to a particular gang set. So in this case, the cops positioned the Stink Team as its own LA street gang, with Draco being the leader. Pointing to the Stink Team, aka the Too Greedy Family, as a squad of home invaders made up of members of rolling crip gangs. Prosecutors said that the Stink Team was a gang with around 20 to 30 members, even pointing out that the Asian-inspired logos that they use are a reference to robbing the homes of Asian people, and a common identity of the Stink Team as a street gang. Draco would later tell DJ Vlad that he felt that the cops were simply trying to make him guilty by association for wild things that his gang-affiliated friends were doing completely separate to him. We're gonna put these people and make it seem like, well, he's hanging around with him, this is his close friend, they're going around starting problems, shooting at people, whatever they're alleging, lies that they saying happened. And basically that's how they tried to get the, the gang charged with the indictment. Well, they indicted us on that charge anyway, yeah. so I didn't get that until after the indictment. Despite the cops' fairly misinformed opinions on Draco's gang membership, the case was even more flimsy under the surface. Because one of the most absurd pieces of evidence supposedly proving Draco's gang membership was his rivalry with RJ. With court papers citing RJ's affiliation with the Athens Park Bloods and RJ's ongoing competitive rap rivalry with Draco as evidence of an ongoing all-out gang war between the two groups, with Draco telling Vlad that the cops were trying to use the RJ beef to pin gang affiliations on him. They didn't have nothing, so I guess they like figured, found out about me and RJ like getting into it, so they like try to pin this together like my rap beef 
or like whatever, a gang murder or whatever the alleging that happened. The prosecution's entire argument against Draco specifically was built on a foundation of sand. Their entire case against Draco came from AB telling that prison informant that when they went to that party that night, they were looking for RJ, which in the opinion of detectives and prosecutors meant that Draco had directed his entire gang to go to that party that night to kill RJ as part of a gang feud, going as far as to claim that Draco's lyrics on his flex freestyle, where he says that he had RJ in the trunk, was an admission of his desire to kill his rivals, even though that song was released after the murder of Red Bull. And even though RJ wasn't Athens Park blood, a different gang to the Inglewood family bloods, which the murdered man Red Bull had belonged to. The prosecutor's case against Draco was very flimsy indeed. And to make matters worse for prosecutors, not only was RJ completely unharmed as part of this beef, but there was no evidence to indicate that RJ had ever intended to be at that party where Red Bull ultimately lost his life. Now, RJ would tell Adam22 on No Jumper that he was aware that the cops had told him that Draco was trying to line him up, but he outright denied ever having plans to be at the party where Red Bull was killed. I wasn't supposed to be at that show. I wasn't supposed to be at that show and nobody- The show that they're saying that he was nobody sending called. someone to kill you at or whatever, yeah. I think I got to, I got a lot of love out here, you know what I'm saying, even from my enemies, you know, so. I don't think nobody was trying to kill me. RJ would also go on social media denying that he ever planned to attend that pajama party where Red Bull died, saying that he had a show elsewhere that night. I've never been a runner, nor a no-show. Everybody know that I ain't never been booked for no damn pajama jam. For one, had a show somewhere else. Why you didn't cut? Show me the flyer. RJ would even go on to say that he was actually a fan of Draco, suggesting that their ongoing feud had just been a rap rivalry and by no means a genuine gang war. I love Draco music. That's what people don't even realize. And people be talking about all of this beef shit. Bro, it's no beef with me and Draco, bro. So with all of that in mind, much to the bafflement of journalists covering Draco's case, prosecutors were still going ahead with the case against Draco, specifically going with the narrative that they believed Draco had gone to the party that night to kill RJ, arguing that because Draco had led the stinks on a ride, intending to kill RJ, that he should still be held responsible when another unrelated gang member ends up getting murdered by one of his friends for reasons that have nothing to do with him. With Draco later trying to unpack the ridiculousness of this line of thinking, in a DJ Vlad interview. I grabbed 12 people to go to a party with me where he's not on a flyer, where in my expensive Mercedes Benz, along with five other cars to drive to a party to go kill a rapper who wasn't on a flyer, waited there, waited for him to show up, a blood walks by, whatever, somebody else starts shooting randomly. And that I'm responsible for it basically because um, I start beefs with people and pass out guns and I don't know, I'm John Gotti, I guess. Whilst awaiting trial, Draco was interviewed from jail by Jeff Weiss, the same journalist who wrote that LA Times piece on him days before his arrest. And during the interview, Draco claimed that it was two specific Monterey Park Sheriff detectives named Hardeman and Biddle who were targeting him so specifically, saying that it was these two detectives that were bringing an 18 month old cold case against Draco just because of how famous he was getting. With Draco questioning the suspicious timing of him being arrested just days after that LA Times article about him was released. Though to be fair, Draco did at least admit that these detectives' obsession with him might have something to do with the fact that he'd been taunting them publicly. Draco said that these detectives had even gone as far as to get his mother fired from her job, threatening her with conspiracy charges and ultimately leading to her losing her apartment, with Draco ending that interview saying definitively he didn't do it. Draco would sit in jail for the majority of 2018, with his September 2018 music video for the song Roll Bounce being one of the only things he released during this period. Draco would be interviewed again by Dazed in November 2018, telling the world that he was facing life in prison or even the death penalty. He denied having a street beef with RJ once again, saying things were just music between them. He claimed to have never known Red Bull, the man who was killed, ultimately saying that he believed that the police were just using his YouTube and Instagram content against him, seemingly getting no option of bail during his stay in prison, and saying he's just sat in jail making streaming money, so I guess things could be worse. Draco was being held at Men's Central Jail in Los Angeles during this period. It's not one of the best places you would want to find yourself, but the sad truth is, things could actually get much worse for Draco. Because during his stay in jail the second time, Draco claimed to have been subjected to dozens of months of solitary confinement. Because in January 2019, he claimed on Twitter to be quitting music and taking all of his tracks down, blaming Detective Hardeman for the end of his career for trying to use his lyrics against him. But perhaps Draco underestimated just how grimy this detective really was, as a result of being publicly shamed for ruining 
ruining Draco's career, because that tweet would end up getting used against him too, as the detectives and prosecutors would make moves to have Draco's public statements about them on Twitter as grounds for further punishment. With Draco later telling DJ Vlad that he was subjected to months of solitary confinement, not for violent behaviour, but because of his followers on social media hating on the detective that had built the case against him. I had a bit of a pause time. I wanted to uh, take my music down and shit because they were using it against me. They had like 4,000 comments and shit like that. And he went to a judge and got an order basically saying that. And my comments was basically saying, Cam, his mom calling him saying that they want to kill him and all type of weird shit. Because of my influence and my followers and all this other stuff that he feels that these threats can be carried out and all this like weird shit, so they took my privileges. Draco's lawyer would come out later to say that his public statements on Twitter, specifically this tweet, is what wound him up in the solitary confinement cell, more specifically, the exact cell that Suge Knight ended up in. You know, Draco was in, um, you know, general population. I think he was okay. And right. then he tweeted this and the detective went and went to a different judge, not even our judge, and got him placed in solitary confinement uh, in Suge Knight's old cell. And so he's locked down um, 24 hours a day, except for a couple of breaks where he gets to go out. Like he's, um, you know, the leader of uh, the Mexican mafia, you know, some, some large, powerful prison gang for tweeting, you know, I'm taking my music down and, and thank Hardiman. And he's remained in there for eight, almost nine months now. Draco would later tell Andrew Callahan in a podcast that it was around the 10 month mark that his mental health started slipping and he begun having hallucinations in his cell alone. Yeah, it seems like all that time in solitary would like, would probably make you go crazy. Yeah. Do you start hallucinating or having like- Oh yeah, for sure. You see and shit that's, that is not there. I don't know how many shadows, you like that. Everything was cool to like my 10th month. Like 10th month and then, I don't know. Shit started going left. But yeah, the room started getting smaller. Like shit started, like, it's crazy. So you felt the walls start to close in? Yeah, pretty much. I never knew what that saying meant. I, I know now though. The cops and prosecutors put Draco through hell whilst awaiting trial. They used every dirty trick they could to keep him down, but eventually he would have his day in court. Ultimately, Draco would emerge from his case victorious. But once again, even with the law seemingly on his side, the powers that be still wanted to play dirty and take Draco down. Draco had been in jail for well over a year by the time he was finally able to go for trial. It was clear what the prosecutor's strategy was. Try and draw flimsy conclusions from Draco's public persona as a gangster in his music to paint him as the real leader of a bloodthirsty street gang. But when the facts of the trial came to light, it was clear what had really happened. Draco was rolling with friends of various gang affiliations and just so happened to be there when two of his gang affiliated friends saw one of their enemies and started shooting. But the cops would throw everything they had at Draco to try and paint him and the stink team as guilty of gang activity. Apparently when it came to trial, prosecutors even called a store clerk from Neiman Marcus to testify against the stink team for regularly spending stolen money in their store and wrapping about it. A troll level reference to Draco's earlier lyrics about his ops being so broke that the Neiman Marcus employees don't know who they are. The prosecutors even went further, spectacularly bringing out several Asian men and women accompanied by foreign language interpreters, asking them one by one if they have ever been to Neiman Marcus in Beverly Hills, with each telling the courts no, they did not authorize the stink team to spend thousands of their stolen dollars on high-end clothing. The cops were really doing everything they could to try and make this case stick to the stink team. And despite Despite the fact that both of the killers in this case, Kells and AB, as well as Stink Team member 2 Shitty, had all made incriminating statements to undercover informants in jail, a great deal of additional testimony at the trial would come from former Stink Team member turned snitch, solo real name Davian Irving, who would become state witness and testify against the Stink Team after being the only person positively identified by the police as being at the crime scene. Solo was offered full immunity in exchange for any info about the case, with him going full 6-9, taking the stand and telling the entire story of what happened that night when the stink team ran into Red Bull. Solo broke down the details of that night minute by minute, telling the court that they were at Draco's house before the party, but also saying specifically that Draco had no idea that the shooting was going to occur. Solo was the perfect witness to convict the real killers Kells and AB, but the cops wanted Draco and the truth didn't fit in with their narrative. 
so they would continue to bring up the beef between Draco and RJ, and make immense effort to connect the murder of Red Bull to Draco's music. And to be fair, they would have a few good leads, because once investigators had determined the guns from the shooting, from both the bullets left at the scene and AB's confession that a 38 and a 40 were used, the cops would eventually find the 40 Glock that they believed had been used in the murder, and in an effort to connect the Stink Team's alleged crimes to their music, detectives would take a closer look at Draco's recent music videos. That's when they found the video to that track Chunky Monkey, from a month before the murder, where Draco, Kells and Ralphie danced around in gorilla masks and toted guns. The Chunky Monkey music video featured a lot of extreme close-ups of guns. In fact, this music video was so well shot that several of the guns appear on screen with their serial numbers on display in glorious 4K. It was later alleged that a gun featured in the video with its serial number on display was the exact same pistol that had fired the 40 caliber cartridge that was found at the scene. Though to be fair, it was claimed that other people had possessed that gun between the Chunky Monkey music video shoot and the actual murder of Red Bull. Also featured heavily in the Chunky Monkey music video was Draco's signature Mercedes SUV that was also seen at the scene of the Red Bull murder. At the time, people were commenting all over that video that everybody included in it is now facing 25 to life. But of course, all of that incrimination was really bad news for Kells and AB, the young shooters who had actually done the crime, with the prosecution's case against Kells looking particularly strong. Not only had he been duly snitched on by himself and his friends to those undercover informants, but the cops also had evidence that following the murder, Kells had posted clips on social media saying that he was sipping on Deadpool, as well as another clip that was posted on his own Facebook that had a bunch of people in the comments talking very reckless about what had happened to Red Bull. It was clear that Kells and AB were very deeply tied into LA's Crip gang politics. Combine that with the fact that Red Bull was a seemingly beloved Inglewood blood with a deep reputation in the streets, it's not unsurprising then that during the trial against Kells, it was reported that the court was lined with both Bloods and Crips in attendance to show support and pressure respectively, with the heavy blood and crit presence on both sides apparently leading to a courthouse brawl where somebody was stabbed during the trial. Things were getting real in the Compton courthouse, but ultimately that wouldn't matter. Draco's co-defendant Kell's real name Michael Buchanan was ultimately convicted of murder and multiple accounts of attempted murder with the gang enhancement, avoiding the death penalty but receiving a full life sentence, with the other shooter AB being under 18 at the time of his trial, and at this point it's unclear whether or not he faced trial privately as a juvenile, with the results not being made public, or perhaps due to delays in the legal system, maybe he's not even gone to trial at all yet. But with all of the evidence against him, you can safely assume he probably got a similar outcome to Kelts. Meanwhile, Ralphie the Plug was convicted of second degree burglary and possession of an assault rifle with a gang enhancement. But of course, the most eagerly anticipated outcome of the whole trial was for Draco himself. His trial would last a whopping eight and a half weeks, during which apparently two black jurors were removed from the case after expressing concern that the gang evidence used against Draco was not accurate. But no matter how many dirty tricks the prosecutors tried to pull against Draco, in the end he was victorious. So on July the 25th, 2019, at a Compton courthouse, Draco the ruler would finally be acquitted of murder and attempted murder. He would tweet in celebration, for everyone that thought I was gonna lose, I won, bitch. But sadly, things were far from over for Draco because despite beating the most serious charges of the case, he was still convicted of felony gun possession by a felon. Meanwhile, two other counts of criminal gang conspiracy and shooting from a motor vehicle returned a hung jury. So, even after beating the trial of his life, getting acquitted of murder, and narrowly avoiding the death penalty, Draco's life would still be in the hands of prosecutors, who now, embarrassed after being duly battered at trial by Draco the ruler, would now be desperate for a dirty trick that they could use to try and keep Draco in jail for as long as possible with no justification. In the end, the district attorney decided to refile charges of criminal gang conspiracy and shooting from a motor vehicle against Draco, as these counts had originally returned a hung jury. Shooting from a motor vehicle is a crime that could see Draco facing three to seven years in jail, but with the gang enhancement, that criminal gang conspiracy charge, Draco was once again facing life in prison, even though he'd been fully acquitted on those original murder and attempted murder charges. This was a dirty move by prosecutors who were essentially holding Draco in custody for a crime he had already been acquitted of. If if the jury had already found him innocent of murder and attempted murder, it was quite the stretch to suggest that he had still shot from a car and been involved in the conspiracy, but clearly the prosecutors had a grudge against Draco after losing in court over the main charges. And of course, if keeping Draco in prison after he was acquitted wasn't enough, prosecutors also made sure that during this time, Draco was still held in solitary confinement. But somehow this didn't stop Draco from still managing to get access to a phone and tweeting about his case, with Draco taken to the net in September 2019, telling the world 
trial that he was essentially being charged for the same crime that he got acquitted for a few months previous, saying enough is enough, and acknowledging he knows detectives are just trying to get justice for the victim's family, but surely his acquittal and Kells' conviction would mean something to prosecutors. It didn't. And the cops would do everything they could to keep Draco in jail after his acquittal, with Draco's lawyer later telling No Jumper in an interview that he believed that the cops and prosecutors were seeing Draco as a trophy. It's a trophy. He's a trophy. You know, a big, a big fish for for them to try to take down. Because you know they're humiliated because they didn't get him the first time around. So they're right. like, oh, let's double down. Let's really go for this again. Draco's new trial was set for August in 2020, meaning that he would have been in jail for over a year following his acquittal for murder. It's truly crazy when you think about it. But fortunately in the end, after so much bad luck and an additional year sat in jail unjustly, Draco would finally catch a break as the LA County District Attorney who had had a vendetta against Draco, Jackie Lacey, would end up losing her job, partly the result of a terrible track record, refusing to prosecute a number of police shootings as well as Harvey Weinstein, along with her own husband even catching headlines for threatening to shoot and kill BLM protesters. So in November 2020, a new District Attorney would be on the scene, potentially looking to save face over just how badly Draco's case had been handled. And after this change of administration, Draco the Ruler ended up being offered a plea deal from the new DA who dropped the original gang conspiracy charge that had saw Draco facing life, allowing him to accept a guilty plea for shooting from a motor vehicle, a crime that he continued to deny, saying that he was essentially forced to plead guilty for a crime he did not do just to get out of prison. So you took a plea deal for a crime you didn't commit? Basically, like everyone else that takes crime, plea deals for crimes they didn't commit, take gang enhancements, take stuff. So after a cumulative three years of battling for his life in jail and quite literally beating the death penalty, Draco would finally be a free man again. But hell, on these dangerous LA streets, even being free wouldn't be easy. Because upon his release, Draco the Ruler would be returning to a snake pit. As the LA rap scene that he had left behind all those years had flourished, with Draco's former enemies building strength and new alliances while he was behind bars. Meaning that when Draco was released, he would have to fight for dominance in the rap game once again. And considering just how dangerous LA street rap scene is, he'd be risking his life every step of the way. Whilst Draco was locked in prison, other LA rappers are competing for the space he used to occupy. For example, AZ Chike. The rapper, hailing from South Central, had picked up some steam with his track Burn Rubber again releasing September the 7th, 2017. He'd collaborate with an Inglewood rapper who Draco wasn't very fond of by the name of Frosty the Snowman on the track One Up. Draco had been having issues with Frosty even before his time in jail. They'd previously been in the studio together on good terms, but eventually started beefing, with Draco revealing in a 2017 No Jumper interview that he'd made a post mocking people for driving old Mercedes with Frosty apparently taking offense. He was in the studio talking about, well, we heard you don't say this. You don't say it like this. Should, <laughs> I, should I do it like this? I like when I put the post up, I put niggas be posting 06 Benzes, New York Idolizers, and 06 Benzes. They all tag Frosty. I didn't tag the. <laughs> <laughs> Frosty had had early successes with tracks like Ya Dig and Milwaukee Bucks, and would later have a resurgence with his music blowing up on TikTok, landing Frosty millions of views on his original songs, millions more on TikTok remixes, and hundreds of thousands of videos being made to his music. Also big from Inglewood is a rapper by the name of Rucci, who also linked up with AZ Chike on the collab track Light It Up, with Rucci and AZ Chike going on to be regular collaborators. In fact, they would go on to collaborate with another Inglewood regular by the name of Lil Deuce, with their track Every N-Word. Then there's also the likes of Mozzie, who had previously worked with Draco on tracks like Fresh Out of Jail. But while Draco had gone back into jail, Mozzie was making songs with Inglewood natives like Rucci, for example, the track Believe In Me, and Mozzie would eventually go on to make an entire album with YG called Community Service. And though YG isn't from Inglewood, he probably is the most prominent person in the LA music scene to have a grudge against Draco. Basically, if you're an LA rapper with any kind of ties or friends in Inglewood, you and Draco probably aren't gonna get along. And with Draco now finally getting out of jail, it wouldn't take long for old beefs to evolve, reignite, and get cracking once again. With the sad truth being, after narrowly escaping the death penalty and life in prison, with his newfound freedom, Draco's life would be in danger more than ever.
Even while he was locked up, Draco didn't give up on his rap game aspirations. He continued dropping music recorded from the phone in jail, and his thank you for using GTL mixtape released in June 2020, nearly a year after Draco's acquittal on those murder charges. This was a mixtape which Pitchfork labelled as the best of Draco's career, and the best prison rap album ever recorded. But those crackly verses recorded over a jailhouse phone could only satisfy fans for so long, and eventually the wait would finally be over as Draco the Ruler is released from prison on November the 5th, 2020, with Draco being seen celebrating with his family in the car driving home from jail. We will, my nephew, he out, yes! Uh, I'm not. <laughs> Swore I wasn't finna get out. What happened? <laughs> Yeah. A couple of days after his release on November the 7th, 2020, Draco goes on a big IG live rant getting three years of raw emotions off of his chest. He said that when he was facing the death penalty, no one in the LA scene stuck up for him because he was taking their shine. But now he's back, there is no way he's falling off again. Seen the police was doing me foul, bro. I was fighting a DP, bro. Didn't nobody open up their mouth to say nothing because of they hate for me, bro, that, 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 that I was going to take their shine, bro. And I still got out anyway, bitch. You, you sit here and watch my fucking lives. Go pillow talk on the nigga and y'all can't stop nothing. You know why? Because nigga still going to listen to my shit, you weird ass. All I'm going to do is keep spending this money, nigga. And, and if y'all be speculating... Watching my shit every day, my stacks don't get no smaller. They've been getting larger, family. That gonna fall off, not me, buddy. I don't do that. I don't fall off, buddy. When I first got out, I came out with a bundle. I remember every call that wasn't accepted. Keep that same energy, bitch ass. I'm the reason that was able to feed they mother kids while I was in jail for stealing my mother style and getting on off that shit, bitch. These Try to be me so much, bro. They start having the attitude like they really me. I've been holding this shit in for three years, bro. These is weirdos, bro. How many, how many out of all these that Nick seen out here, bro, that was rapping like a doing all this shit, bro? Did y'all see post me when I got out? All I'm gonna tell you, all I'm gonna tell you, bitch ass rap, stay out my way, nigga. Cause soon as you think like, oh damn, that tape gonna fly out, I'm gonna drop another one. Then I'm gonna drop another one. I'm not, nigga, I'm the realest rapper from LA motherfucking county, nigga. Name one rapper that was out here, nigga, that nigga beat some shit I beat. Please tell me. Nigga. Favorite rapper, nigga, ain't never even been to jail for the shit I've been to jail for. Nigga. Can't no, can't no LA rapper nigga, that's out here mainstream say he beat a murder, attempted murder, five attempted murder, and a DP. Draco was getting heated on this rant and even ended up comparing his case to Louisiana rap legend Lil Boosie's case suggesting that Draco beat bigger charges. And Lil Boosie had one murder. I had a murder, five attempted murder, and a conspiracy. I got Lil Boosie beat. Wrong with it. At a certain point, Draco began to ponder whether or not his ops were snitches because they had guns in their videos but never seemed to go to jail. But you wanna be politicking on me. You probably would've told. Let's read about these have guns in their videos be big rags and all that, bro. All that is super gang members, got toolies all the time and all that. Why they don't these ever come to jail? Because it's telling, that's why. These was telling, that's what it is. Just one of out the way, them niggas dropping dimes, he's talking to the police. But more important than dunking on the ops was feeding the fans, who were much more interested in Draco returning to the booth than settling scores with old enemies. And Draco would eventually return to the music scene with a bang on the 9th of November 2020, releasing his first music video for the song Fights Don't Matter. A song all about shooting your ops 33 times, because fights don't matter when you can kill your enemy with a gun. The video landed over 150,000 views on its first day, at which point Draco knew that his rap career was back in full swing. And naturally, it didn't take long for his competitive streak to come out. Draco would go live again on November the 13th, dissing Frosty, saying he's not on Draco's level. Frosty is not on my level. He doesn't have no money. Money. He's not on my level. Then on November the 16th, 2020, Draco, fresh out of jail, appears for his first extended interview on the No Jumper podcast. It was good to see Draco free and speaking openly again, but it was abundantly clear just how much pain and suffering he'd been through during his incarceration. He told Adam that he was in solitary for around 18 months and was traumatized by the sound of the door locking behind him. But yeah, I was there for a long time. I was in the worst place you could be in there. Right. 2904, solitary confinement. Shit is crazy. What, what's it like being in there for, for months? Like, what does it do to your, to your brain? I mean, it's just 
fuck you up mentally, psychologically, everything. Like, I don't know. It's hard. It'd be hard to like trust him. I'd be like, I don't know. I still kind of be like that. Like. I can't even hear a door close without me turning my head like. Draco would also have some choice words for his ops during this interview, saying everybody is mad that he's not still in jail and that they're scared of him. But but you named names at a certain point and you were really yeah, making do, it clear that you didn't- Yeah, I don't give a I don't care. Like, I'm out now, so right. they, they, they didn't stop nothing. I know they didn't want me to get out, it's whatever though. You feel like it's like that, that not only are you not getting support from other rappers in LA, but that they also, that they would rather see you. They would rather see me there. Right. Because they know. Look, look what's going on now. The spotlight's on me. You ain't seen nobody post nothing. Ain't nobody dropped no songs. Come on, bro. They know. This is what they didn't want. These motherfuckers are scared of me, bro. Weird ass. When asked about how he feels about people wanting to hurt him, he says he's not scared and that it's been four years now. They should get over it. What is your attitude on people who want to do something to you at this point out here in the streets it's like it's been four years bro get over it like that's how i feel but thankfully draco did end the interview with something sensible saying he no longer wants to go around hanging out in the hood because nothing good could come of it there ain't no reason for me to keep coming anyway it's not nothing over there but like i i there's nothing over there but trouble it was good news that draco was out of jail seemingly focused on staying out of trouble and moving forward positively and of course the most important thing when it comes to staying out of the streets is staying in the studio and so after spending a couple of years only able to release songs recorded over a prison phone on the 1st of september 2020 draco finally drops his latest mixtape we know the truth his first studio release since getting out of jail after beating those murder charges the project had the track 20 pieces where draco gleefully celebrates beating his charge whilst bragging of having a grand total of 20 chains around his neck, with Draco rapping the defiant lyric, all 12 jurors not guilty beat it, beginning Draco's ongoing trend of using lyrics in his songs to brag about having convinced all 12 jurors of his innocence at his trial. There wasn't a great deal of remorse or sensitivity on the project. Elsewhere on there, Draco raps about Randy mossing a body and feeling like John Gotti after beating the charges. Ultimately, this project was Draco's triumph from return to the game and his victory lap after beating the supposed body. And with these celebratory lyrics in mind, it's no surprise that Draco's enemies weren't really feeling this project. In response to Draco's new release, a post would begin to circulate on social media saying that Draco's music is banned from being played in the city of Inglewood. The post says that if you're caught playing Draco's music from your car in Inglewood, you're gonna get pulled out of it like Grand Theft Auto. This post prompted defiant Draco fans to drive into the heart of Inglewood playing his music, something which Draco himself was eager to repost. But the issues didn't stop there. Draco's ops were ready to get at him on records too, and soon AZ Trike would drop his new diss track, Clear the Air, aka Welcome Home, aimed at Draco. The song was a lyrical warning shot to Draco where he disses the Stink team, saying he doesn't rap anything like Draco, and acknowledging Draco dissing him in his IG lives. It was clear that Draco's return to the rap game wasn't going to please everyone, but he would continue pushing his career forward regardless. Spending much of December 2020 doing interviews to promote his new project, on the 5th Draco would appear on Vlad TV, retelling the insane story of his come up and his time in jail. Then after that on December the 9th, he did the Break Check podcast with Andrew Callahan, telling Andrew that he doesn't feel he gets a lot of love since he got out of jail. I didn't think it was gonna be like this. Like, I thought it would've been like more love from people. Apparently they feel like I'm gonna take their spot. So. A lot of people been like hating on me and shit. That sucks, man. He also told Andrew that his time in jail made him never want to go back. Do you yeah. feel like it still affects you to this day, all the time you spent in there? Yeah, for sure. Because like, I always think every day. I mean, it kind of helps me, though, because every day I think, like, I never want to go back to jail. Like, I never want to go through this again. Mm -hmm. So anytime I, like, drift off and, and think about, like, doing something that potentially made me go to jail, I always think, like, that's not where I want to go. Like, that's not where I want to be. I can't even, I, so I've been up for two day, two weeks straight. I haven't been able to sleep. Because every day I've been thinking like, man, damn, I'm really out. Damn, I can't go back to jail. I can't do this. He also said ominously that he believes that people are after him at all times. I can't even play like that anyway, because people, people want to get me. You know, people are out to get me. Police, regular people, so. I can't even be slipping like that to where somebody catching me like. You got a lot of people right. Draco would certainly have to look over his shoulder as he continued to navigate the dangerous world of LA street rap politics. But lucky for Draco, while the ops in his city were hating on him, some of the biggest names in the rap game were loving his music. As on the 19th of December, Draco would tease a new song featuring the biggest rapper who has ever lived, Drake, along with a caption telling his ops that he's on a whole different level to them. Draco revealed that his collaboration with Drake was set to appear on his next full-length project, The Truth Hurts, before going on a furious rant at everybody who switched on him while he was in jail. I'm the same nigga though. Remember that. I never switched up.
I switched up on me. You been on hating me, all this clown ass shit. Remember though, nobody went to f me when I was in jail. Nobody went to do none of this. Nobody gonna be trying to hit me up now. And that's cool and all that. But I'm not with you. Remember that, bro. I've been I'm not, bro. I've been I've been getting money. I've been doing shit, bro. I am bro. Remember that. Not me. So when you get to sitting here, sitting at home, thinking that, oh, maybe y'all can me, and maybe y'all on the same level as me, y'all not. Period. Clearly Draco was lining up some big moves and planning to dunk on everyone who didn't believe in him or who wasn't there for him. And while Draco was moving on from the people who let him down in the past, he was also expanding his team and putting new people on. He'd pop up with a verse on the Ruth's Chris freestyle, with new Stink Team member Remble on December the 23rd, 2020, with Draco's verse on this song being extremely provocative towards his rivals. Draco would rap on the song telling his ops to quite literally come and find him if they want him. He invites his ops to hop off Twitter and come and shoot him in real life, followed by him bragging that he hangs around with real killers. He says that the Stink Team members go for celebratory meals at Ruth's Chris every time they kill a new op. And Draco would end the song with his latest offensive catchphrase towards his ops, he's never coming back and that's that. Draco was really wearing his body beating badge with pride. Even though the official version of the story suggested Draco had nothing to do with the killing that landed him in jail. No doubt many of these lyrics would have offended Draco's ops and had them looking to cause him harm. And it seemed that over the course of 2021, Draco would get much more dark, spending the majority of his time focusing on old feuds and provoking enemies, parading his gang affiliations and criminal background in his lyrics and on social media. Most notably was in January 2021, when Draco went live on Instagram with Kel who was still in prison after being sentenced to life for the murder of Red Bull. All while fans piled into the comments saying free Kells. They know what the f going on. Huh? They know what's going on. They can't take it though. Man. You can't take it. It's hurting their head. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Try it if you want to. Yeah. I ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> oh, gang. Nothing they can say. There's nothing they can say, bro. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Yeah, they should have been in that courtroom then. Yeah, when we was right like there say. facing an electric chair. It's so hot. We were facing an electric chair on the dead yeah, armies. Man. Your whole family doing backflips. I tell your mama do a backflip. <laughs> the same month he went live with Red Bull's Killer, Draco would also drop the music video for Mr. Mosley Claps Back, a song once again featuring that controversial lyric, he's never coming back and that's that, as well as a menacing outro where Draco repeats that line and tells whoever's listening, face it bruh, like you can sit there moping around sitting on the couch. I know you're going through some shit though, but just, just face it bruh, like he's never coming back and that's that, you hear me? Draco was really doing the most to get a rise out of his ops. But that doesn't mean his enemies weren't pushing their musical careers forward either. Because around this time, other rappers with ties to Inglewood are making big moves too. Like Lil Deuce, who dropped his track Outside, a tiny young freestyle, in February 2021, which went on to rack up over a million views. That track coming along with a music video showcasing an army of people who Draco has issues with. Just over a week after that song dropped, on February the 11th, Draco would go live talking on his ops being fake and staying solid in prison. Come out here and I'm good at all and it didn't be trying pull that cord like you can do whatever you want to no like i like forgot yeah like they didn't find 10 choppers in my house like i'm not you know fighting the dp you niggas is rap and you might be a little bit street but y'all not like that we really like that ops is ops my ops is other ops and all that why ain't nobody touch me in prison why ain't nobody touch me yeah because niggas know better than Someone they looking for me, no, can't be looking for me because I hang out every day, every day, every day. He'd be like, damn, bro, why you be hanging out that all day, bro? You need to go in the house because nobody's gonna do nothing. Then on February 24th, 2021, Draco would drop his new project, the much anticipated The Truth Hurts mixtape, featuring a cover where Draco stood in front of his beloved Rolls Royce Dawn convertible, holding one of the umbrellas that the car famously comes with. The project also featured the track Talk To Me featuring Drake, which despite not getting a music video, went on to become Draco's most played song on Spotify, racking up a whopping 41 million spins to date. The project also included the song Pow Right In The Kisser, which did get a music video and saw Draco and the whole stink team goading their ops with incredibly disrespectful lyrics. Draco says pow right in the kisser every few seconds of the track, whilst him and other stink team members rap offensive disses to their ops, 
trying to cause as much offence as possible before Draco jumps in with the ad-lib, pow right in the kisser. On the song, Draco also brought back his disrespectful catchphrase, he's never coming back and that's that, as well as a long outro where Draco once again tells his ops to get over it, saying all this stuff happened three years ago and they need to let go of this grudge. Draco was really going hard to pile disrespect onto his ops during this period. But at this point in his career, I mean, he's collaborating with Drake, the most successful mainstream rap artist to ever live. He really didn't need to be mocking his ops at every opportunity and putting a target on his back. Perhaps Draco was too strict to transition into the music industry fully. Or perhaps all those years in solitary confinement just changed him. Because he seemed to come out of jail with a lifelong grudge against his ops that he simply couldn't move on from. But whatever it was, Draco just seemed incapable of letting the past be the past and leaving his beefs in the streets. And over the course of 2021, Draco would spiral deeper and deeper into his feuds with gang-affiliated LA rappers. With this feud being made much worse by the tragic and unrelated passing of one of Draco's closest friends, which naturally the ops would be mocking at every opportunity. On February the 16th, 2021, Stink Team rapper Ketchy the Great dies after being hit by a car in a freak accident on Pacific Coast Highway. Pacific Coast Highway and Pacific Palisades has reopened this morning after a deadly crash there. A person was fatally struck by a vehicle in the area of PCH in Porto Marina Way shortly before 11 o'clock last night. Sky 2 was over the investigation outside of the closed restaurant Sidewalk Cafe. One car involved in the crash drove off the road <clears> and onto the beach. The identity of the victim has not been released. Draco mourned the loss of his close friend and collaborator on Twitter, as did many other titans of the rap media game. But soon Draco would take to IG Live to make sure the world knew that Ketchy's death was an accident unrelated to the ongoing beef. You got hit by a car, bro. Yeah. But you know how these gonna get, yeah. No, no, that didn't happen, bro. That didn't happen, bro. It's on the news, bro. It's on the shit, bro. You got hit by a car about some pedestrians. Nah, you know they finna start, though. Finna be popping it like doing something, something that didn't happen. You know how these be. You want to claim bodies that they ain't do. And it seemed as if Draco was right, because soon after this, the likes of Lil Deuce was on Twitter celebrating Ketchy's death, even going as far as to drop his exact location for anybody looking for him after those tweets. Draco would clap back on Twitter, calling anybody disrespecting Ketchy a homophobic slur, as well as going on IG saying that anybody that's cool with Englewood is a target for his team, even if they're not from LA. Any you hang with him, if you from out of town, you hang with him, you getting chipped to him, straight up, all that plan shit. I just talked about this shit the other day, bro. Just talking about, I don't be tripping up, coming out here, and nigga, with niggas I don't fuck with, I don't give a fuck where you from, I don't give a fuck if you're from Alaska, none of that shit. You fuck with, but you getting chipped. Nigga. I don't care where you from, Texas, any of that shit. You could be from the Bay, Sacramento, you come out here, you f these f and you getting chipped. Despite the devastating death of Ketchy, Draco would go on to have a successful rollout that month of his Truth Hurts mixtape and his Drake collaboration. But things would heat up once again on March the 8th, 2021, when No Jumper released a new interview with YG, where he introduces members of his 400 record label. And during the interview, YG appeared to have a few choice words for Draco without naming him specifically, explaining that his crew don't do rap beefs and saying that if they're in a street beef, it's for real and his goons are really gonna get you. I'm not finna be going out there doing no rap this and shit cause like if it's smoke it's really smoke with us we ain't playing all that rap beef and all that shit we don't we not rap beefing we really beefing hmm. the homies gonna get you this appeared to be a bold threat and naturally it didn't take draco long to clap back three days later on march the 11th 2021 draco reacts to adam 22 doing the yg interview by previewing a song on ig live with lyrics that say a rapper will get Swiss cheesed, i.e. shot, if he does one more thing, I assume referring to YG. Draco also goes on to post numerous IG stories referring to YG directly, reposting a story that YG put up, congratulating Bobby Schmurder for getting out of jail, with a caption saying people will congratulate somebody getting out of jail from out of town, but hate when somebody gets out of jail in their own city. Draco would then suggest that he wasn't the only person who'd realised this, then posting that he's happy that Bobby got out of jail, before absurdly suggesting that the stink team had started a trend of people getting out of jail. Draco would then turn his attention back to YG, saying that he's not going to let someone acting tough stop him from progressing his career. Suggesting that YG didn't help the up-and-comers in LA with their careers, so now Draco's got to do it. Draco then tells YG publicly to unfollow him on Instagram, sort of a humble brag to let the world know that YG is 
still following him. A week after that, Draco goes live on Instagram, dissing YG again, as well as Snoop Dogg and Boosie for not being independent and not beating charges as bad as the ones he beat. I said what I said. Just keep tagging all this, all that. First of all, just keep saying all this. Oh, what about Kenny? What about YG? Not independent. What about Snoop Dogg? He beat a murder, not the death penalty. What about this? What about Lil Boosie? He beat one murder. I beat one murder. Attention, nigga. Conspiracy. Yeah. Ain't getting no money from their music. Stop comparing me to niggas that's broke and scary. They want to break it down when I see him. There's no time it is. Shit open up in April. So all that tough ass shit see me. You know what it is. Like they don't see the Don riding around LA. What's wrong with you? Clearly Draco was eager to disrespect his ops, but after the loss of his close friend Ketchy the Great, his enemies wanted to do the same thing right back to him. The following month on April the 9th, 2021, Inglewood affiliated rapper Ice Water Rock drops a Draco and Ketchy diss song called Ketchy Pack, a song primarily focused on mocking Ketchy the Great's death and showing utmost disrespect by driving over tomato ketchup packets in his low rider and spilling ketchup on the ground. But while the ops were going low, Draco was going high. Because a week after that incredibly disrespectful catchy diss song dropped, Draco went mainstream, with his feature on Saweetie's song Risky releasing, giving Draco the chance to showcase his talent to a much more mainstream pop audience. Sadly, Draco's style wasn't necessarily what the mainstream was looking for, with many commenters not entirely happy with Draco's performance on the track. But that didn't matter, because Draco was an independent artist, and the last thing he cared about was impressing a mainstream audience. And so Three days after that, he would go on to drop a much more independent release, a collab album with his brother Ralphie the Plug titled A Cold Day in Hell. This included more disrespectful songs aimed at his ops like Just Retire, where he says, I'm the reason that all your homies are dying. The only way I see us having it is my way. He's never coming back and that's that, just retire. Then on May the 6th, the Long Live the Greatest music video drops, where we see Draco paying his respects to Ketchy, with the music video showing Ketchy's funeral in great detail, along with documentary footage of the Stink team attending the ceremony. From here, Draco would continue to be active in the rap scene making big moves. Being seen on May the 13th, 2021, hanging out with Drake after the successful release of their collab. Yeah. I'm big dog, man. Yeah, you know what's going yeah. on. Uh, two Drakes, man. Yeah, so, yeah boy. Uh, they can't stop it, man. Yeah. They can't stop two yeah, Drakes, boy. man. Uh, uh, big Drake yeah. Then on May the 22nd, Draco would be seen on social media playing a Frosty song and celebrating him being out of jail, I assume, doing what YG was supposed to do. Ultimately, Draco's fake positivity towards his ops would have its limits. And soon, some of Draco's enemies would end up doing something so offensive, they would offend the whole of Los Angeles. At the end of May 2021, another Inglewood blood, who was known to socialize with Frosty by the name of Baby Capone, would defend face the mural of Nipsey Hussle outside of his marathon clothing store where he lost his life, tagging IFGB and his own name over Nipsey's face, much to the disappointment of locals with the utmost love and respect for Nipsey. Capone, huh? God. Capone. Yeah. Wall banging Capone, okay. Yeah. After the incident, Capone would go live with another blood from his hood by the name of Indian Red Boy, laughing about the incident, dissing other hoods, and claiming to be 6 OK or rolling 60s killers. Yeah. You know what's going on, yeah. dead on me. Okay. You know what's going Shout on, bitch, dead on yeah. me. You know what's going on, yeah. bitch. Stop playing yeah. with us, bitch. Not long after this went down, Draco himself would come out to diss baby Capone and the whole of Inglewood, telling the world that these are the people that he's beefing with. These are the that don't like me, bro. These are the people that don't like me. These, these are the type of people that they are. Oh, I don't know, you just over exaggerating. All right, now you see the same. I've been telling you, this was hoes. I've been telling bro. Now you wanna what? What I'm waiting for now? You wanna wait till you cross Nipsey face out and do all this on the wall? These hoes, I've been saying this from the jump. Wow, you know yeah, right. yeah. Bet all y'all dumbass look stupid as a now. These y'all wanted to group up and click up with it right. and all that and good to go against me. Then on June the first, Draco goes live telling his followers that his ops don't last long and that they should check the scoreboard. They don't make it too long though. They either end up dying <laughs> or like catching some or like. Die. Scoreboard! Scoreboard! <laughs> oh, 
I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The scoreboard is crazy. Draco clearly had the ops in Inglewood on his mind during this period. On June the 11th, he goes live on IG once again, this time with a pinned comment saying, who wants to fight Draco from Inglewood? And during that live, Draco says he never lost a fight in jail, going on to say the Stinks beat up Inglewood in prison, even Red Bull specifically. Inglewood versus Stink team? Yeah. We know that no wins. Dead homie beating the shit off. Yeah. Oh, I asked every in the county jail. This rap shit on it. Dead homies. We, yeah. County jail? No wins on none of the homies. Dead homies. Yeah. Catch up, Mel. Slap hang out. My brother, my brother knocked Jay Bird out. Yeah. What? Red Bull beat his ass. Talk about Seven Flame beat his ass. Dead homies. Yeah. No wins. Saw the rap cap. Ask the bro about fights in the county jail. No wins. Dead homies. I beat the shit out of Solo on the dead homies. No wins. Oh, none of the homies. The ketchup beat the shit out of No good. Black eyes. Couldn't even open his eyes. Ask that don't get that don't get along with they steal blood. Ask them the real stories. Dead homies. No wins on none of my homies. Draco goes on to say that he's even going to beat up his ops and their security at Rolling Loud, and that he loves fighting so much he doesn't need a gun. Let, let's see if you got all that tough shit when we do this Rolling Loud on the dead homies, because you just can't fight, we're going to beat the shit out you. We, we come to jail. Y'all don't come to jail. Dead homies fighting is nothing. So we're going to see when it's Rolling Loud, and ain't no guns and all that, when we beating the shit out of y'all and y'all security. Why are we even talking about fighting? Fighting is, fighting is fun, though. But nah, we ain't doing no fighting. Unless we getting paid. We can get paid. We can get paid out the fighting. I'll beat the ass with the AP on. Draco goes on to say that he will knock out AZ Chike and that when his ops beef him, their OGs get so scared they have to warn everybody that the stink team might actually pull up to their hood and shoot people. Why he even comment on Ralphie shit on the dead homie? He gonna go to his nose fat too. It's bro, he gonna party. go to Chike, bro. Who? Chike, bro, he's gonna go to sleep the first two seconds. Dead homie. That's why these niggas quiet when he's popping that shit. He's be in the background like, hey, bro, don't do that, bro. This is gonna really come over here and shoot one of them in the face. Yeah, um. Despite being out of jail for months at this point, Draco still seemed obsessed with jailhouse politics. Going live again around eight days later on June the 19th, alongside Ralphie, speaking publicly on fights that they had with Inglewood members whilst in jail. That guy in the ring with me left out bad, no cap. Since I was like 11 that. years old, he, that guy in the ring with me left out bad. They don't, they, don't, they don't like bringing up that part. That was Jay Bird, he was asleep. Oh yeah, went to sleep in the cell. He thought he was big and all might doing all them push-ups. He got up in the ring and said, Ooh. Oh, what? Yeah, red, ooh. They don't, like, they, don't, they don't like to tell the stories how they homies got their ass beat. They got too many. All victorious victories. Beat the shit out of Solo. Nigga, what? Put it out. Draco then begins to tell everybody that AZ Chike apparently only joined the Bloods at age 25. Cause you gang man, you a bitch. You bitch. You don't want to tell this bitch you got put on at 25. A few days later, on June the 23rd, 2021, Draco goes live again, bragging about the assortment of cars that he brought when he got out of jail. You see how I came, as soon as he get out, double R, Range Rover, S550, stop playing with me. I'm not the one to play with. Just hated that I was in jail. The real is out of jail now. Y'all got some to compete with. Yeah, homie. He went on to taunt his ops, telling them that he's outside and that they shouldn't even think about pulling up on him. Outside. Where you say I don't be at? I'm always outside. Who was that? It's a outside. They like man, that bitch ass. On live right now, he think he's safe. <laughs> I know where we know where he at. Go pull up on him. Don't think about it. Clearly, there was a lot of danger lurking in these LA streets, and it wouldn't be long until another person lost their life. Because on July the 8th, Indian Red Boy, the blood who had been seen on IG Live with Capone after defacing Nipsey Hussle's mural, would be murdered in the most shocking way, being shot dead whilst on IG Live with Capone himself, quite literally being shot up on camera and dying in front of all of his followers. That footage is still circulating, but is far too violent to show you on YouTube. The war playing out on LA streets was a dangerous game, but thankfully, in between the death, disses, and destruction, Draco was still finding the time to drop off fire music. His next album, Ain't That The Truth, would drop on July the 23rd. The project containing possibly my favourite Draco song, Flu Flammer Op, 
a certified banger that has Draco at his best, came with a music video that dropped later that month, where Draco once again showed off his beloved Rolls Royce Dawn extensively. And on that song, Ralphie the Plug has some eyebrow raising lyrics, seeming to take responsibility for Red Bull's murder where he says, another one dead if you put your hands on this jewelry, all 12 said not guilty, you heard the jury. Draco would also appear to reference Indian Red Boy's graphic murder on IG Live, in lyrics from the mixtape's opening track Just Dance, where Draco raps, since they like Instagram so much they gon' die on it, 223 shells rocking in his head while he live streaming. So while Draco was dropping some of the best music of his career, it was coming out to a backdrop of escalating LA violence. On August the 10th, 2021, Englewood members were targeted in a shooting where a car carrying Frosty and one of his friends was shot up and hit multiple times crashing, with Frosty being hit and surviving, but his friend ultimately losing his life. Well, more breaking news at this hour, this time in Inglewood, where police are investigating a double shooting. There was a, a shooting here. Two people sent to the hospital in critical condition off to a, a local trauma center. And you see this car that crashed. Looks like it's involved in the crash. It's unclear if the people inside were shot or if that's a suspect vehicle. We don't have any information about a, a suspect being in custody, but two people uh, had to be transported to the hospital. Pretty serious shooting here with uh, La Brea shut down. Frosty would even go live following the shooting, still wearing all of his chains and continuing to gang bang on camera from the back of the ambulance. Ah! Yeah, it's from the dead homies. Y'all know what the going on. I feel like El Chapo, bitch. I'm flaming. New music coming soon. Watch out for that. Go follow me on Snowgirl TV. Oh, I can't feel nothing in my arm. I'm ready to get tatted. Dead homie, my whole shit now. Oh, they had to make me a... Uh, a hand thing so I can throw up the B. I'll tell them if I can't throw up the B on F Street, it's bad. No wheelchair for me on the hood. You know, I'm gonna purchase me some new legs immediately. Stop playing. 5,000 a leg on F Street. I can't hold the phone with my right hand. I can still sock it on F Street. They gotta transport me by myself with extra security. Yeah, on F Street, my dingling still work on flaming. You think I don't got G Wagons and shit following me? I don't think y'all can see it yet. I think we don't got the G-Wagons in the back and all the shits, Rolls Royces and all that. When you a rich, they treat you good, you feel me? <laughs> they kept my chains for me. With Frosty even telling an audience of IG followers that him and his homie Darby had two guns on them when they were attacked, but they didn't get to them in time. All in the comments, I need to see FIP Darby. That's on the dead homies we had two straps on this. It just it like life had happened like that we had two guns yeah and we still it, it happened just caught us lacking sad while one Inglewood rapper was recovering from a tragedy, another was angling to escalate the beef with Draco. On August the 19th, 2021, Munchie B, the blind OG from Inglewood, who appeared in the hood vlog alongside Red Bull, would release a Draco diss song called The Truth Is The Truth, with the song's title being a play on the titles of Draco's mixtape series, which were all named after the truth in some way. On the song, Munchie B dissed Draco's brother Ralphie, saying that he stole his rap style from Frosty. He referenced stink team member Solo snitching during the Red Bull trial. He mocked Ketchy the Great for being hit by a car. He even disses Draco's young son, saying he's going to beat him up when he turns 18. A savage diss, but from here there would be much more musical activity coming from Inglewood. As also in August, word would spread of an upcoming collaboration track between Inglewood affiliates AZ Chike and Rucci and Louisiana rap legend Lil Boosie. This would lead Draco to publicly diss Lil Boosie for making songs with his op AZ Chike, with Draco saying Boosie has been picking the wrong people to work with and that he's now lost all respect for him. Though in all fairness, Draco seemed to have been sneak dissing Boosie ever since he got out of jail was one of the first songs that he dropped after getting out, being a track called Lil Boosie, where Draco says that his charges topped Lil Boosie's murder charges. AZ Chike would respond saying that Draco was trying to blackball him from the rap game and suggesting that Boosie just doesn't care about his opinion. And Chike would later post a story mocking Draco, suggesting that Boosie would never care about his opinion. What y'all think that motive was? Like, what was the end result of telling Boosie you lost all respect for him? Was Boosie supposed to take his verse back? <laughs> was he supposed to be like, God darn it, Draco, you're right. <laughs> he's quote unquote losing respect for somebody he's never met a day in his life. They never exchanged words. They didn't even have a prior relationship to what he said. We actually got a lot of mutuals, a whole lot of mutuals, bro. It's who just took a pick with him that I with. 
You don't see me saying I lost respect for them or none of that shit. And Boosie himself would even later commentate on the situation in a DJ Vlad interview, ultimately saying Draco's beefs have nothing to do with him and don't influence who he's going to collab with. But Draco's anger about his ops getting a Boosie feature was minor in comparison to the explosion of beef he was about to release onto the LA rap scene. As on August the 20th, 2021, Draco previews a new song called Ingleweird on his IG line. One song dissing the entire city of Inglewood. And people were all in the comments telling Draco to shoot the music video in Inglewood if he's really that tough, causing Draco to warn his ops not to be doing all that. Shoot the video in Inglewood, tough guy. Y'all yeah, know what's up. Don't do, don't do, don't do all that on my shit. Draco would go on to say once again that when people from Inglewood diss him, their OGs tell them to chill out because they know he'll go there and do something crazy. Why you think when that bitch ass diss me, it was on that shit. You know why they was on him? Yeah, they was on him because they like, yeah, he gonna come through here. Yeah, stop running your mouth because you ain't, you a... You don't gotta deal with that when it's come through here and get to acting crazy. Draco would of course go on to diss Rucci and AZ Trike extensively, mainly focused on questioning their street credentials and financial stability. What street shit is Trike doing? I'll wait. Mm. What street shit is Rucci doing? I'll wait. Cause, cause wearing rags and videos don't, don't make you a uh, street. How many how, how many bodies did it be? <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> how many times did it even been to jail? <laughs> I'll wait. Have you went to jail for a traffic ticket? <laughs> Suspended license. Burglary. Robbery. Commercial burglary. Oh, okay. Nothing? Never been to the county? Okay. Yeah. 2500 5,000. 50. <laughs> yeah. 50. <laughs> All right. What type of cars drive? Okay. Do have cars. Okay. Foot, pull up and slap on it because you know what I really be on. That very same day, Draco goes live again, dissing his ops, saying they never went to jail like him, and saying again that they're too broke to have cars. Then it to make a song about the homie getting hit by cars and all type of shit, bro. Y'all didn't do that. And a week later, on the 7th of September, Draco premieres the full-blown music video to his scathing diss track, Inglewood. And it's got bar after bar mocking the entire city of Inglewood, saying that he's going to turn the whole of California against Inglewood, and that he plans on tying up and hanging his ops. He says he'll turn the suburbs of Inglewood to a gym factory, which honestly, I'm still not entirely sure what that means. Let me know in the comments if you know. It sounds bad. He calls Inglewood natives weenies. He says a lot of people in Inglewood are snitches. He disses Rootsy and calls him poor. He disses A. Easy trike in numerous lyrics, including one where he questions why he would join a gang at 25, and saying that he'll hang him up like a coat, as well as mocking AZ Trike and Rucci for still being cold in the music industry despite getting their feature from Lil Boosie. With this being a reference to the fact that their collab track Hood Rack still hasn't passed 400,000 views on YouTube. Draco also says on the song that he dropped 50 on a blind person, which seems to suggest that he was putting up money for a hit on Inglewood member Munchie B, who was previously shot in the head and left blind. Draco goes on to rap that his ops are as sweet as buttercups and that he'll turn their ass to Reese's pieces, with this being an apparent reference to a rumored prison incident, which may or may not have happened involving Munchie B, some peanut butter, and some pretty unpleasant things that I just don't even want to get into here. Draco ends the track with one final dose of disrespect, saying Free Kells, a reference to that Stink Team member who was convicted of murdering Red Bull. Now, I personally think that after all of the drama with Draco fighting the cops and prosecutors, even after beating his case, it's pretty likely that the cops were watching his every move. And I've got no doubt that after the song Inglewood released, the police would have been aware that Draco had just made a public declaration of war on everyone in Inglewood and were probably keeping a close eye on him. And with with that in mind, it's not massively surprising that only a day after Draco released Inglewood, he was arrested whilst riding in the back of an Uber. Draco would actually go live on Instagram whilst being pulled over by the police, with his son in the back of an Uber having a full-scale meltdown as to how the cops knew to target him in the back of a taxi. You're getting detained for 148, delaying my investigation. What is your investigation? I already told y'all, 10 windows. I don't have an ID. And I need to identify you. He gave me his ID. You're not giving me your ID. Mind you, you're you not even supposed to be on. talking. To, exactly, I'm my seatbelt on because I'm with my son. I know, but I'm asking you mm -hmm. to, I'm back in the car. But now, 
I want you to put the phone down. Put your hands up here. I'm on live. What on. are you talking about? I'm on live. Okay. I don't care about being on live. I'm on live too. All see right. this? LAPD got me on live too. I'll take one. I'll see that. You can pick the phone down. If you want to point the phone at me, that's fine. All right. I'm cool with that. All right. I don't know what's going on right now, bro. Um, this is crazy. I jumped in the Uber, bro, to pick up my son, bro. Literally. Five out of one. Have all units respond. North my Carolina son is in the car, bro. This is crazy, bro. This is. Got my son with me in the car, bro. This is crazy, bro. Yeah. I'm, so I'm actually not to go in your pocket. I'm putting my phone in my pocket, bro. No, no, but I don't want you to go in your pocket. What are y'all on, bro? I'm not on anything. I'm not yelling or screaming or nothing. Like you asked you. the Uber I'm driver, asking. bro. Like, ID. Right? I asked you for your uh, ID. So we going on right now, bro. And then when I asked for a backup, you wanted to give me your ID. And then I asked you to step out of the car. You told me no. I didn't tell you no. I said, what am I stepping out the car for? Because we have the right to pull you out of the car. You didn't have an ID at first. You didn't have an ID. I just noticed it behind my shit. At first, you allegedly didn't have an ID, so I want to identify you. This shit is crazy, bro. This shit is crazy. What the f is going on? So I'm telling you right now, you're the one who's escalating right. this, and you're the one who's stating you have your kid in the car. I didn't want to do this that, in bro. But you seen it. You were behind still, me, I can bro. I can still pull you over. Your kid in the car or not? What are you talking about, bro? What the f is going on? So, this is, this is where we're going to be at right now. My supervisor here, I'm going to tell you, my supervisor here, and then we got a couple more units in here. We're going to ask you one more time to step out, and if you say no, then we're going to do what we got to do to get you. It's crazy, and then I'm going to take you out, and then, and then I'm going to take you to jail. What the f is going on, bro? So what, why are y'all pulling me, what did I do for y'all to put me, y'all pulling over an Uber driver, bro? What is going on? But we need an encounter with the program. What is the... Just get out of the car and we'll handle this. Bro, what are you talking about? Just give us a second. Just give us a second. Fine. Right. Let's make this easy. It's not a big deal. Bro, what the fuck are you... This is crazy, bro. Let's do this the right way. What are, what are we doing, bro? Why? What, what is going on, though? Exactly, bro. Why are y'all pulling me over? Driver, he so. said that he put him over for tent windows. This is an Uber driver, bro. This has nothing to do. With what is he talking about? Exactly. We'll explain, we'll explain everything. This shit is crazy, bro. This shit is crazy, bro. Let's just make this real easy. You got a bunch of cops coming over here for nothing. Oh, really? Hello, hello, hello. What are we dealing with, bro? Little man, I'm gonna take your kid out of the car, okay? What is going on, bro? Look. What is hey, grab him first. We're gonna get the Uber driver out first. Hey, go, go ahead and grab the kid. What the? What is going on right now, bro? Yeah, yeah. Everybody talks. What is going on? He's in the seatbelt, sir. What the f is going on right now? Come on, baby. Hey, hey, I don't know your name. What's your name? Huh? What's your name, sir? What's your name, bro? What's your name? Daryl. No, I don't, bro, but I don't understand why y'all doing this. That's it. Man, I'm on live, bro. I'm on live, bro. I don't have nothing on me, bro. I'm on live, bro. What are y'all doing, bro? Bro, what are you talking about, bro? Don't fight us. Don't fight us, man. Bro. What are y'all doing, bro? What are y'all doing? I'm on live, bro. Hold up, bro. Hold up. What are y'all doing, bro? 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 Draco would later be seen being led away from the scene in handcuffs, being taken into custody with many speculating he'd been caught with another gun. Following this situation, Draco was taken to the station, he bailed out, and then went live on Instagram, suggesting that the ops are the ones snitching on him. How many times have you ever seen that before? Pulling over Ubers. 
pulled over an Uber. Okay, with my son in there. All they're gonna do is tell him, I know I'm a After this, Draco would go live once again, suggesting that somebody from Inglewood had something to do with his arrest and saying that the ops are hoping that he gets beaten up in jail. And then he like, oh yeah, well, there, there, he talking, he talking about me getting a book yesterday. He talking about some, yeah, well, maybe because he made that diss song uh, against the whole Inglewood, <laughs> like, like, the, like, like, this is a threat to me, bro. Like, what are you talking about, bro? You talking about, he sound like the police. You talking about, if I wasn't worried, you got smacked. You think I'm worried about a diss song? Come on, bro. Well, man, it's, and he said, it's not always going to be the same uh, as last time. And I know what people are saying. Oh yeah, man. Well, he was catching fades last time. Yeah, every time ain't the same. So if I was catching fades last, I so maybe it might be nice this time, bro. Yeah. Maybe how you bitch ass. You talking about two or three niggas? Yeah. Like that, that was like may, 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 know, maybe since maybe you maybe since that died, bro, and didn't want to fight me then. Maybe two or two or three might be bold enough to fight me then. You hear that? Snitch ass. Getting over is pulled over. Damn. Fuck around with you. Sadly, it was this moment when fans began to get concerned about Draco. A post on the subreddit Cali Banging, Reddit's premier community discussing California gang politics, saw a fan pondering Draco's toxic personality, suggesting this might be the reason that he's not going to make it out alive. Pointing out that more people like Draco than he even thinks in LA, but implying that he is sabotaging his own career by leaning into gang beefs, when he should be focusing on his career after getting the industry boost that comes with working with a mainstream artist like Drake. Some suggested in the comments that perhaps it was Draco's lean addiction or PTSD from solitary confinement that had been clouding his judgment recently. With some going as far as to say that if Draco continues down this path, he's unlikely to see 2022. With hindsight, it's clear to see just how right these fans were. Draco essentially signed his own death certificate when he released Ingleweird, but perhaps he just couldn't see it through the muddy puddles of lean clouding his judgment. Naturally, a response to the song would be coming from Inglewood. Thankfully, this begun with back and forths in music rather than violence, with AZ Chike taking to Instagram Live on August the 25th, revealing his new Draco diss song, Lil Stink Stink, with Draco raiding the chat on the IG Live personally to mock and threaten AZ Chike. Draco said, people get smacked for speaking on the stink team. He said Chike's own homies are warning him not to drop the song. He called the track garbage. He suggested that he had sent a request to join the live, which Chike had ignored and just let sit there, and leaving one final ominous comment saying everybody from Inglewood gets killed anyway. It's no wonder that the track got under Draco's skin, when the song itself included sampled audio of Draco being arrested in that Uber only days before. In response to the track, stink team member Money Monk apparently pulled up to AZ Chike's house looking for a fight. Chike where you at, bitch ass? Uh, I'm at your house. Yeah. And it's your house, Chai? Where you at? Huh, where you at? Okay, check, Chai. All right, get in this mother. Come outside and play, bitch. I'm gonna see your parking lot for like 20 minutes, Mark ass. In the days that followed, Draco would continue mocking his ops online. On August the 27th, he posted up on IG, wearing sunglasses and pretending to be blind, saying that he's doing the Munchie B challenge. Draco's latest disses had Redditors convinced that he would be dead soon, unless somebody stepped in and talked some sense to him. But since Ingleweird, the line had been crossed, and there really did appear to be no turning back for the stink team now. On September the 8th, 2021, Money Monk would go on to drop the song Peanut Butter Booty Pack, a scathing Munchie B diss once again referring to that peanut butter incident. And a week after that, on September the 16th, 2021, Draco pulled up for an interview on No Jumper once again, this time speaking incredibly recklessly. He opens up by saying that he is a completely different person to who he was in the last interview, suggesting that in the last interview with No Jumper, he was fresh out of solitary confinement and still suffering mental health challenges, saying that now after some recovery Time, he's a cocky millionaire ready to hurt his op's feelings. See, I'm myself now, so it might be a little. See, this you, interview is different. Now. You were saying that last time you were here, you I was were, fresh out of jail, bro. I just, different just version like, of yourself. Like, yeah, bro. I was inside there, goodbye. Like, fuck, I was 30 months, bro. Like, the, it's different now. Though. I'm a millionaire now. It's kind of different. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they mad about. Because everybody was laughing when I was in jail. Same way they was laughing when I was getting booked by the police. In the interview, Draco would also reveal that he was once again booked for possession of a firearm by a felon after being arrested in that Uber. But they didn't press any charges on you or anything? Uh, no, yeah, they, they said, uh, 
Oh wait, they said they found a gun. <laughs> Fell in with a firearm or something. Draco would then go on to reference the Munchy B peanut butter incident once again, all while very diplomatic co-host AD tried to avoid saying anything that would escalate things, giving Adam-22 a strong eye to try and get him to move on to another topic, all while Draco was warning that the ops are going to be after Adam next. Did you see the part where- uh, About the peanut butter? Where, no. Mouth, no peanut butter? My bad. My bad. That's Who got peanut night. butter? That's a whole nother situation. Yeah, they might come for you after Adam. Street shit. My bad. Okay. Do that. Stay, stay away from me, Adam. I don't want to say nothing about peanut butter, whatever the f that is. What would you do if somebody put peanut butter in your ass? Oh my God. <sighs> well, it would oh really God. depend on the person. Yeah, all right, we're just going to end this thing. Okay. We're not going to touch on this, Adam, because... If my girl wanted to do that, I mean, it is what it is. Stay, stay away from me, Adam. Okay. Leave it alone, bro. Jesus Christ. All See, right. that's why I told you, man. Are y'all going to be ready for me today? Hey, that's, it, hey, that's uh, good. Uh, you feel me? Gina's telling me not to engage <laughs> with this. I don't know what it is. She's just like, stay out of this, hey. Adam. Hey. I like, I like Adam. LA. It's a complicated place. You know place. me, bro. I don't care. Like, and like... But Draco wasn't done clowning Munchie B or dragging Adam-22 unwillingly into LA gang politics as Draco proceeds to ask Adam what he would do if a blind person said they were after him. Hey, if, a, if somebody that can't see said that they was gonna like slide on you, how would that happen? Like, you blind. I'm just wondering this, like, how are you gonna like do anything if you blind? You can't see, you can't even drive. Oh, okay, nobody. God nobody important, it's, it's crazy. I don't know. Mm, I know the truth. From here, a confused Adam says that he often doesn't know exactly what people are talking about when they make inside references on his podcast, with Adam inferring that he didn't know what YG was talking about when he came on No Jumper and said that his crew are really going to get his ops, with Draco clapping back and saying YG isn't really tough. Sometimes I feel like people are uh, talking in innuendo on my podcast and I'm kind of like <laughs> not in the loop. Remember the YG interview? Oh uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that. I didn't really like get no, that there I were coded that, though, messages like, in there that you would feel yeah. a way about. No, nah, it wasn't no coded messages because people are not like that, so it don't even matter. That's kind of like what he said. Yeah. Naturally, the conversation would eventually turn to Inglewood, with a newly cocky Draco the Ruler leaving nothing off the table. He started by saying that he has enemies that don't gangbang, but represent Inglewood and are united in hating him, ultimately saying that he will never resolve his issues with Inglewood. That don't gangbang, bang Inglewood like it's a gang. Like Inglewood, and if you beef with anything over here, we're gonna have each other back. Well, I hope all that shit gets resolved. Never. And Draco goes on to say that his ops aren't really killers, saying they don't own guns and their threats against him are not valid. Do not be like that, Adam, I'm telling you, bro. Like, Cause we be laughing and joking about the situations. Motherfucker be like, I'ma kill you. Like, ah, you don't even own a gun. <laughs> and finally, Draco would end the interview by saying free kills. You any last words? Yep. Free kills. Once again, not all of Draco's fans were pleased at his latest appearance. Redditors on Cali Banging would come out to say they were annoyed at what they described as Draco's arrogant street god persona, with some pointing out that his ego had gotten out of control and saying that he finally got a second chance at life, beating his case, and yet now he's deciding to go straight back into the dark depths of LA gang politics. These are statements that would echo earlier concerns from Draco's fans that his destructive and confrontational attitude would end in tragedy. But at this point, the wheels were in motion and Draco's path into one of the most dangerous situations that the gang lifestyle has to offer would now be unstoppable. A few days after his No Jumper appearance on September the 19th, 2021, Draco would speak again in an IG story saying that the Bloods actually like him apart from the ones in Inglewood. I bless me. Mm, Northern Cali Bloods. No, let, me, let me scratch that. South Central Bloods. Compton Bloods, Pasadena Bloods, San Diego Bloods, Bakersfield Bloods, Northern Cali Bloods, Stockton Bloods, Sacramento Bloods. It's just one group of individuals who don't like me. Crazy, ain't it? And a few days after that, on September the 22nd, Munchie B drops another diss track called Last Lap, dissing both Draco and Nipsey Hussle, whose mural was vandalized by Capone. Eventually, more of Draco's enemies would come out to dispute things he'd said. AZ Trike addressed Draco claiming that he'd joined a gang at 25 in an Innovators interview. What can I gain from joining a gang at 25 that I already got right now? Trike would go on to say that Draco has issues with his homies, not him, but it wouldn't be realistic to be cool with Draco considering the history with Englewood. There is some problems he got going on with the homies. They got nothing to do with me. And that's why he mad because I put him and I'm loyal to him. 
In conclusion, Trike would say that he believes that Draco is simply hating on them. It ain't no beef. This is a bitch and he be hating. Like, it's weird. The day after that dropped, Draco would continue putting his pressure on Inglewood, posting a document purporting to be proof that Frosty had snitched. Then on October the 14th, 2021, Rucci and AZ Trike pull up to No Jumper for their own interview, with Rucci mocking Draco for making the song Ingle Weird, a song all about dissing AZ Trike, when Trike isn't actually from Inglewood originally. The song oh, yeah. called Ingle Weird. <laughs> Oh it's about him. Hmm. He not from Inglewood. They would go on to say that everybody in the Stink team sucks at rapping, apart from Ketchy and Draco, who they say is hanging on by a thread. It ain't it's rapping because the can't rap. Well, there's only one over there that can rap. Who and he hanging with? on by who, a thread. Who you over there? <laughs> little fat boy, little fat girl, he straight. Like, you know what I'm saying? He do his thing time to time. The only other over there that was really greasy, very talented, like, really some shit, RP was catchy. Trike also appeared in a bootleg Kev interview, saying Draco is simply mad that him and Rucci's careers heated up, and saying that he's only mad because they turned him down for a feature whilst he was still in jail. What the hell happened with Draco the ruler? Because don't you guys have mutual people involved in each of y'all situations? So mm -hmm. where where did things go left? He don't like that we hot. When I was in jail though, he wanted to on there though. I told him no, because I think would and. That was it. Rucci went on to say that his entire hood didn't get on with Draco. My city, I'm from Inglewood. We don't get along with bro as a whole, you feel what I'm saying? So, oh, you just doing that because you with them. Nah, it's the homie being loyal, bro. Right. You feel me? But nah, we just with nothing over there. They keep hating and keep saying something about it. So it's like, we gotta give them a little attention. Ultimately claiming not to be happy about the Inglewood song and saying it sucks. What'd you think of it, like as a song? That shit was not tight, yeah. It could have been better. Honestly. Yeah, I felt the beat was hard as f You know, it didn't sound threatening. Like, <coughs> man. At this point, a whole lot of tension had brewed between the Stink team and Inglewood. And it really was just a matter of time until the two groups bumped into each other and things boiled over. But for now, Draco and the Stink team would be more focused on music and money. Spending time performing on their Long Live the Great tour, dedicated to the memory of Ketchy the Great through September and October, with Draco eventually playing a big December 12th show on the bill for LA's Rolling Loud Festival. This was a big opportunity for Draco to perform in front of a crowd of tens of thousands of fans. It must have been an enormous moment for Draco's career, to have beaten the death penalty in a life sentence, getting out and overcoming the trauma of years in solitary confinement, and building up your rap career to the point where you've got thousands of adoring fans screaming his lyrics at the top of their lungs. Getting to this point was an incredible achievement for Draco that's nothing short of amazing. But the sad fact is, this show would be the last one that Draco would ever play. On December the 18th, 2021, Draco was set to perform his next show at the Once Upon a Time in LA Music Festival. He arrived to the venue in his iconic Rolls Royce Dawn and an incredibly small entourage who were meticulously searched and stripped of any weapons upon arrival at the venue. Draco had apparently been given a maximum of 15 wristbands for his entourage, which in the end only stood six people strong, plus just one lone security guard. It was around 8.30 p.m. when things went left. Draco, Ralphie, and others engaged in a scuffle, as apparently somebody in the distance shouted, fuck the stink team, fuck Draco, with the stink team immediately set to square up and squabble with their opposition. Draco, Ralphie, and others begin to engage in a scuffle, but what begins as a fair fight soon swells into a mob brawl, as dozens more people appear to face off with the stink team in a fight. According to witnesses, the attackers are apparently blood members. The mob of attackers, mostly wearing red, descend on the stink team, apparently hollering the famous blood chant, Su Wu. This gang of bloods was later described as being around 40 to 60 people strong, having the stink team only six men strong massively outnumbered. With individuals at the scene notably being seen wearing 400 merch, the record and clothing label of blood rapper YG, who had allegedly arrived at the venue with his entourage shortly before this scuffle broke out. Footage of the altercation would later surface online, which despite being very chaotic, if slowed down and observed carefully, does appear to show the moment when Draco the Ruler is stabbed. These clips are far too violent to show you on YouTube, but if you want to see a full frame-by-frame -frame breakdown of what happened in the footage, you can see that on my Patreon. Slow motion footage circulating after the incident breaks down this short 20 seconds of fight footage in excruciating detail. Before the stabbing takes place, you can actually see somebody in a black ski mask being handed an object that looks like a knife. As the fight goes on, Draco's outnumbered crew are rushed back by the mob of bloods and separated from Draco. At this point, the individual who was earlier handed an object 
appears to swing a knife at Draco, with Draco putting out an open hand to block the blade. His use of an open palm to protect himself is notable, because it suggests that he could see a blade coming towards him rather than a fist, which would have elicited a closed knuckle guard. From here, the camera pans to the right, and we don't see Draco being stabbed directly. However, from the audio, it appears as if somebody is shouting he has a knife, as we see what appears to be Stink Team members fleeing through a nearby gate. As they run, it sounds like somebody says, we got him, perhaps a sign that the fatal stab to Draco's neck had just been administered. And while nothing more of this large rumble is seen in the clip, later more footage would emerge, seeming to show Draco the ruler receiving medical attention as he lays on the ground bleeding from his neck. Draco would be transported from the venue to the hospital in critical condition, sadly being pronounced dead as a result of his stab wounds around midnight, roughly four hours after the altercation. Chaos at a packed concert featuring rap legends like Snoop Dogg and Ice Cube. A person was stabbed and police have shut down the show. Well, a man is reported dead after a being stabbed at a concert in Exposition Park last night. TMZ is reporting the victim was rapper Draco the Ruler. It happened around 8.30 last night during the once upon a time in LA music festival being held at the Bank of California Stadium. Draco's family and friends were left heartbroken after his tragic passing, as were the wider hip hop community. The godfather of LA rap Snoop Dogg mourned the city's loss and described leaving the festival grounds as soon as he heard what had happened to Draco, choosing not to perform. Tory Lanez would come out to say that there will never be another artist like Draco, and Drake would remember how Draco had always lifted up his spirit with his energy. Draco's brother Ralphie would share an eerie story of his own, saying only two days ago, Draco had rapped a lyric about God saving a bed for him because he's coming soon. Meanwhile, despite being upset, many of Draco's fans over on Reddit's Cali Banging were hardly surprised at his passing, with one commenter saying that Draco had been manifesting his own death with his own behavior ever since he'd gotten out of jail, suggesting that drug use, ego, and untreated PTSD combined with a never-ending tendency to provoke his ops, and keeping nothing but yes-men around him, ultimately meant that Draco's death was inevitable. But while Draco's friends and fans were mourning, looking for answers, Draco's ops would naturally be celebrating on social media. Many were turning his provocative lyrics and catchphrases against him, posting pictures of Draco with captions like, he's never coming back and that's that, as well as mocking members of the Stink team for running off on Draco and not shooting back. Of course, Draco's top op Munchie B tweeted for Draco to rest in piss, later posing on Instagram with a knife, mocking Draco for being stabbed in the neck. Stabbed him in the neck, you wanna take it, dear? And Munchie B would go on to remix Draco's Ingleweird, combining his diss song with footage of Draco dying, and going on to put up a story pointing out that both Draco and Nipsey Hussle both spoke on his name in a disrespectful manner and both died slowly. It's no wonder that Munchie B was happy about Draco's passing, considering his close friendship with Red Bull, and just how disrespectful Draco had been to Munchie in some of his songs. Sadly for Draco, the man who famously rapped that fights don't matter would end up outnumbered and unarmed in a fight that would ultimately take his life. It's a sad ending that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. And while fans all over LA and the world mourn the loss of an incredible artist, that sadness would pale in comparison to what Draco's family were going through at the time. Draco's mother vowed to sue Live Nation, citing negligence from the venue and lax security measures from staff, explaining in an interview with Rolling Stone that a large number of people arrived at the venue at the same time as YG, whilst Draco and Ralphie were rolling with a very small crew. She said that 40 to 60 people jumped the stink team in a matter of seconds, leaving Ralphie overwhelmed and unable to protect Draco, who was left stabbed, ultimately concluding that while it was the killer that had the ill intention to take Draco's life, Draco's mother believes that the festival organizers should bear some responsibility for what happened backstage at their event, suggesting that she was pushing ahead with a lawsuit against Live Nation. Live Nation may very well bear some of the blame regarding the circumstances that caused Draco to lose his life that day. But ultimately, the true responsibility lies with the killer who swung the knife and inflicted a fatal blow on Draco's neck during that fight. Following the announcement of Draco's death, the police apparently had zero suspects, but that doesn't mean that the streets weren't talking as Draco and Stink Team affiliate K7 would go live to the world saying that he believed that YG and his crew were responsible for Draco's death and blaming his security for providing the murder weapon. I'm, I'm speaking facts, bro. YG a real life bitch. Bro, I'm so mad, bro. My mama, bro. YG did some whole shit, bro. And if I see cut, I'ma slap the shit up. We fighting big ass security. You got those security guards fight. Come on, bro. That shit ain't cool, bro. Oh, my mama, bro. Got the big ass ball security guard snuck in, it, snuck in knives, all type of weird shit. Let them come seventy thick, but only told us we only can bring fifteen people, bro. That don't make no sense, bro. They only told us we can bring fifteen people, but let them 
bring a hundred more people, bro. YG can't perform in LA no more, bro. Hey, bro, YG a real bitch, cuz. His new Draco was gonna take his spot, cuz. Really a, set the whole shit up, bro. This shit was a setup from the start, bro. Bro, these ready for war, bro. YG can't perform in LA no more. So, you know what I'm saying? Came in, as soon as he came in, went bad, basically, like, like, know what they was doing, bro. Ultimately, at this time, it's unclear exactly who was responsible for Draco the Ruler's murder. His death was a huge loss for the LA music scene. His unique style and outspoken personality made him one of the most impactful artists to come out of the city over the last decade. But the real truth is that Draco was moving reckless and risking his life with his zero fucks given attitude to the LA gang scene. He maintained his innocence for around three years during the Red Bull case, fighting the death penalty in earnest. An innocent man being persecuted for his association associations and mere friendships with the real killer. The fans rallied behind Draco and ultimately after a long wait, justice prevailed. Which in a way makes it so much more disappointing that after beating that case, he would come out and act so recklessly, using his music to prod and mock the surviving friends of the murdered man. Draco was competitive to a fault. It seems that he was unable to let anybody else in his city shine because he was just too focused on beefing his ops to the bitter end. And when Draco decided to wage war on the entire city of Inglewood, it was really hard to see any outcome other than him getting hurt or killed. Draco sounded invincible when he rapped, but the reality is, anybody can get caught slipping if they let their guard down. And in the case of Draco the Ruler, when that day came, he went out fighting and standing on everything he said, going down as a legend of the rap game who truly lived and died by every word he said on the beat. Rest in peace Draco the Ruler, and I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure that you like, comment and subscribe. Shout out to Cormac for helping me put this video together. Shout out to my editor Camille. Gang, gang, Trap Lord team, we're out here baby. Make sure that you subscribe to the second channel, Trap More Ross. Make sure you subscribe to my third channel, my clips channel, Trap Lord Clips. And thank you to all the patrons for supporting me on this channel. Until next time, peace.